ಅಚ್ಯುತ ಕೇಶವ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ದಾಮೋದರ ರಾಮನಾರಾಯಣ you know some of the basic ground rules so we just want you to uh, relax sit back and absorb the contents again we are collectively going to read uh, another wonderful pastime from shrimad bhagavatam this time we are going to get the we're going to hear uh, the pastime collectively read and hear the pastimes of lord balaram for a change uh, because uh, we've been hearing so many so many pastimes of lord krishna as well as some of the wonderful devotees of lord krishna but today we will hear the past times of lord balaram and uh, you know please uh, you know give your 100% uh, we have lot of opportunities to be distracted when we are at home that's one of the disadvantages if you are uh, in a enclosed uh, space in a temple uh, there's less chance of getting distracted uh, so we just uh, kindly request you to stay focused uh, you know we will make sure that we are wrapping it up on time this is a relatively smaller chapter and uh, in this way we are uh, pleasing lord krishna and uh, it will benefit us and uh, we will collectively learn uh, as we usually do um, you know this past time as well and uh, please read uh, some of the verses because that is uh, for you to get uh, uh, you know used to those verses and as well as you to explain the contents of it to all of us right so this is an interactive session not one person talking so kindly participate in that uh, so in this we will have uh, commentaries by is divan grace ac bhaktivedanta swami shri prabhupad and we also have uh, taken some of the key uh, commentaries uh, from other acharyas from our brahma madhva gaudiya vaishnava sampradaya like vishnu chakravarti thakur jeeva goswami uh, shridhar swami and few others as well and pretty much uh, this is all what uh, we need to understand uh, uh, about the past time that we are going to read today so because it it, it is put together based on hearing from uh, uh, you know contemporary gurus as well as uh, acharyas like uh, vishnuanand chakravarti thakur etc so it gives a complete picture but again what uh, we will uh, you know benefit is when all of you contribute uh, your understanding and your realization and how we can use this past time effectively to improve our spiritual lives is what uh, we will want to learn from you towards the end of today's class and uh, you know it takes a lot of hours together so let's maximize uh, uh, the effort uh, by absorbing the contents and uh, you know i usually have more than what we need in each slide uh, so um, you know if you if you're a fast reader you can read more contents than what we may cover and also please feel free to take pictures in your cell phone as you feel something is good and useful uh, if it will save your time in the future and please take some notes uh, as well because uh, lord krishna will uh, really like it when we are using more of our senses to please him and uh, uh, the devotees as well uh we will also have a chronological summary in the end so it will be nicely registered in our mind and a very short quiz will follow just like we've been doing it for the last uh, 40 months and repetition causes retention so i will repeat few things a uh, few times deliberately so that uh, we remember uh, the contents okay okay so why we selected stories uh, you know for those of you who been with us uh, you know that uh, we usually do shrimad bhagavatam as an entire story uh, which is a consolidation of several verses together the complete past time either in one session or we continue in couple of sessions and we'll cover it so today's session is a stand alone session we'll start it and finish it as i mentioned it's a smaller uh, past time and chapter and uh, everywhere there is story right in kali yuga as well uh, bhakti siddhanta saraswati goswami has said that uh, you know uh, we 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 have to hear more of chaitanya bhagavat than chaitanya charitamrita or let me rephrase what he said is read chaitanya bhagavat first before you read chaitanya charitamrita because chaitanya bhagavat is full of past times of uh, chaitanya mahaprabhu so every day is full of stories right at home at school television movies everywhere there is stories and uh, stories you know even our grandparents and grand uh, great great uh, grandparents were passing along stories with morals and uh, which will give us knowledge so stories form a integral part of our life and uh, we remember things 
by stories, right? And that is why Srimad Bhagavatam is there because in the story format, uh, uh, so that uh, this complicated uh, Vedanta Sutra is provided to us in a nice uh, commentary form in, in form of these uh, stories. So even complex information becomes uh, very tangible and uh, very easy for us to understand. And it, uh, it, it, it improves us, it, it motivates us and uh, helps us uh, stay connected with the personalities and therefore helps us uh, remember things much longer. Okay, so so that, that's why we have stories and uh, Srimad Bhagavatam is uh, full of stories, right? Um, it, it, it also, um, you know, it, it not only entertains us, but also educates us. That's the most important part of Srimad Bhagavatam. Yes, sir. Okay, so uh, we will have a, a chronological summary in the very end as well. Uh, why multi-sensory study? You know, because typically it's one person giving a class. One of the main reasons is we want to hear from you. We want you to share your experience and your understanding of the past tense because the same past tense can be construed in many different ways, in all, in all good uh, ways. So we would like to hear your uh, understanding of that from your point of view so that collectively we will learn more. And uh, another reason for multi-sensory, another reason uh, why we have multi-sensory study is that not only for participation by everyone else uh, and better understanding because of using more than just the ears, you're using the eyes, you're using the hands to take the notes, etc. Because uh, many of us learn differently, right? For those of you who may be teachers or you're teaching something in your work as well, you know, out of your audience of 50, 50 employees or students, uh, some would be more visual learners, some are, uh, uh, you know, uh, auditory learners, they, they hear more, uh, they, they, they're able to comprehend more when they hear, some of them comprehend more when they see, etc. Cetera, et cetera. So there are many different types of learners. So this multi-sensory study will uh, impact uh, many uh, in a positive way. The whole intent is, uh, you know, for us somehow to understand and be uh, uh, comprehending the contents of Srimad Bhagavatam so that it benefits us. So we are doing this so that we are benefiting from it as a secondary benefit, but primarily Lord Krishna is pleased when we are giving back the time that he's given us. He's given us so much of time in our lives and we are giving back this two hours per month collectively, right? I know all of you are giving... Uh, so many hours to Lord Krishna on a daily basis, but here we are collectively uh, trying to understand a subject uh, for Krishna's pleasure. And as a byproduct, we are benefiting from it. Okay, so with that, uh, we will get um, you know the participation uh, session uh, uh, started. Uh, so uh, what we are going to do is uh, we are going to ask um, some of the devotees to uh, start reading some of the verses. So the first uh, slide is this one, the bottom part of the slide. So we would uh, get uh, Mother Amita Panchal. I can see her there if you can unmute and uh, you can read the Sanskrit and English. It's a transliteration. Uh, if you're comfortable with both, that will be great. If not, just the English will be great. Mother. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, thank you. Uh, should I say CC Madhya Lila? Madhya Lila, thank you. Yeah, Madhya sure. 19.10 Narada Pancharatra Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to Rupa Goswami in Prayag for 10 days. Sarvopadi Vini Muktam Tat Paratvena Nirmalam Rishikena Rishikesha Sevanam Bhaktir Akutyate. Translation. Bhakti or devotional service means engaging all our senses in the service of the Lord, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the master of all the senses. When the spirit soul renders service unto the Supreme, there are two side effects. One is freed from all material designations and one's senses are purified simply by being employed in the service of the Lord. Thank Wonderful. you, Prabhupada. Thank you. Thank you very much. So again, as I mentioned, uh, we deliberately keep some of those uh, almost in all of our sessions because these are fundamental aspects of us uh, reading Srimad Bhagavatam or studying Srimad Bhagavatam. So um, again, repetition causes retention. So this is one of those verses that we would like to put and some of the slides that will follow this slide as well uh, are some of the foundational aspects that we need to go through every time. So again, this particular uh, verse uh, tells us that uh, when we are uh, 
uh, engaging different senses, right? So that's why we have this multimedia presentation. As you would have heard that this takes much longer period of time to put things together so that we can collectively read and understand. So we are using more of our senses, not just ears to hear, but we are using our eyes to see what is on the screen. We are using our hands, senses to write or take down notes or even to take some pictures in your cell phone of what you see uh, that is very interesting. So when we do that, when we're using more of our senses, then we are freed from our material designations because we always think that I, me, myself. So it, it brings us to that level where, you know, all the senses are uh, given to us uh, by the Supreme Personality of God and nothing belongs to us. And also when we engage our different senses of uh, touch and, uh, you know, seeing and hearing, and et cetera, then our senses are being purified according to uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's te teaching to Rupa Goswami in Prayag, if you remember, it's for 10 days that went on amazing teachings are there. Okay, so uh, we started this in 2015, as you know, um, I just keep updating it as we go through every class. Um, so here we are, uh, 41st uh, session, and uh, uh, we are today going to hear collectively uh, about uh, Lord Balaram. Usually it's all Lord Krishna or the uh, great uh, expansions or um, you know, Shakti Avesh avatars of Lord Krishna, which we saw Maharaj Prithu, four sessions we had uh, uh, last year. So this time uh, we're going to uh, hear about Lord Balaram. So the wonderful uh, aspect of this is uh, inadvertently, without even we knowing, uh, we have covered over 22% uh, of the entire Srimad Bhagavatam. For those of you who've been on this journey with us. So we kindly thank you for all the devotees who have joined us again uh, today as well. You are giving back the time to Krishna and it pleases Krishna and as a byproduct, it will absolutely benefit you uh, because uh, you're hearing from Srimad Bhagavatam as it is. So in reality, over 55% of uh, Srimad Bhagavatam pastimes are covered because we are covering pastimes here. Okay, so again, this is again uh, something that we would like to put every time. It, it started off, Srimad Bhagavatam starts off with just four verses, which is in the second canto, ninth chapter, four verses, uh, Lord Krishna to uh, Lord Brahma, and then Lord Brahma to his son Narada Muni. And Narada Muni taught that to his disciple Vyasadeva, and uh, Vyasadeva uh, to his son Sukhdev Goswami, and then it gets expanded. And then that was taught by Sukhdev Goswami to Maharaj Parikshit, as well as Sutta Goswami and other sages were present. And then Sutta Goswami uh, to the sages in Naimasharinya forest, uh, uh, headed by Shauna Karishi. And uh, it would have stopped there, if not for his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada, who came to the West and who gave us this uh, priceless wisdom uh, of Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, Chaitanya Charitamrita, and other wonderful scriptures established ISKCON and, and you know printed so many books for us to really understand this. Otherwise, it would have been restricted to few ashrams in South India or North India. And we would not, so many people would not have benefited from this. And I mean, all of us from so many different countries, 21 of us are there in this uh, Zoom call today. For, uh, we all have a background uh, from so many different countries, from Bangladesh, from Sri Lanka, from India, and many other countries. We won't be coming together in unison uh, uh, in, in, in glorification of the Supreme Personality of Godhead or his uh, expansions. So, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. So, again, a screenshot of uh, where we started and where we are. Uh, so, we covered the maximum number of uh, uh, pastimes from Canto 10. And which is, which is obvious because close to 28% uh, of the entire Srimad Bhagavatam is from 10th can canto. And most of the pastimes are from 10th canto. So that's why we focus more on 10th canto. But there was a sprinkling of many other um, cantos and chapters in the last uh, 40 uh, sessions that we have had. Uh, this is, uh, again, a repetition causes retention. We need to know this. So I'm going to put that again here. So we'll get uh, another devotee to uh, maybe read this. Maybe uh, Rajesh Prabhu, if you can read uh, what is uh, highlighted there, 1328. Hare Krishna. Krishna is to Bhagavan Swayam. Lord Krishna is the original personality of God. This verse is the Paribhasa Sutra for the whole of Bhagavatam. Yeah, thank you, Prabhu. And Paribhasa uh, Paribha Sutra means uh, this, this, is, this is the key to understand the entire book. 
it is stated only once and it says it is it, it governs the content of the entire book so the reason why we state this is in some of the past times when we see it will say narada muni is is supreme or even some of the sages are supreme um, so we just need to know overall what is the bigger picture here right so the bigger picture is lord krishna is the original personality of godhead or the supreme personality of godhead okay so and uh, we will start off with our uh, usual invocation prayer so maybe mother padmakshi would you be kind enough to um, chant this three times yes prabhu om namo bhagavate vasudevaya om namo bhagavate vasudevaya om namo bhagavate vasudevaya wonderful so we are purified when we chant these wonderful verses that are typically chanted before any shrimad bhagavatam class and as we know this is not like a typical class we are collectively learning together but these are verses that are critical that we chant uh, before uh, any of the session so maybe we'll get uh, other our uh, mother shrimati is there mother shrimati if you can read uh, this mother sure narayanam namaskritya naram chaiva narottamam devim saraswatim vyasam Tato jayam udhirayet. Translation to Prabhu? Yeah, please. Before reciting the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is the very means of conquest, one should offer respectful obeisances onto the personality of Godhead, Narayana, onto Nar Narayana Rishi, the supermost human being, onto Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning, and onto Srila Vyasadeva, and to Srila Bhagavad, the translator, commentator. We're not able to hear you, Mother, very clearly. Oh. Okay, maybe I'll turn up the volume a little. No, this is good. If you can read the translation alone before reciting, if you can. Okay. Before reciting the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is the very means of conquest, one should offer respectful obeisances onto the personality of Godhead, Narayan, onto Nar Narayan Rishi, the supermost human being, onto Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning, and onto Srila Vyasadeva, the author, and to Srila Prabhupada, the translator, translator, commentator, and our spiritual master. Explanation if required, Srila Prabhupada is the Siksha Guru for all. Thank you very much. Okay, so the second uh, verse that we usually chant. Uh, so anybody would like to chant this? Maybe Nandas, uh, Nanda Sutta Prabhu, Mother uh, Bhuvana. Yeah, one of you, if you can read this. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Nasta Prayeshu Abhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Sloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtiki By regular attendance in classes on the Bhagavatam and by rendering of service to the pure devotee, all that is troublesome to the heart is almost completely destroyed. And loving service unto the personality of Godhead, who is praised with transcendental songs, is established as an irrevocable fact. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. Okay, and we will chant the Hare Krishna Mahamantra all together. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Krishna Hare Hare. Hare, Hare. Hare Rama, Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, 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 Hare Hare. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Okay, so again, this is uh, uh, one of those slides that we would like to put. We introduced this probably about three or four sessions ago. It took uh, a long time for us to put this together. So, um, you know, this is something that you would, you know, typically love to take a picture in your phone and keep it and review this and refer to this. And of course, you can make something like this and add more, right? So more details as you feel fit, uh, you can always do that. Uh, but for all practical purposes, uh, today we are going to uh, uh, collectively read one of the pastimes from the 10th canto. And uh, this is one of those pastimes that took place uh, in the Dwaraka area when Lord Krishna spent 29, um, uh, uh, 96 years actually from when he was 29 years to about 120 to 125 years. 
so this pastime uh, took place uh, even though it is lord balaram's pastime but uh, lord krishna was uh, there in dwaraka during this time so canto 10 uh, represents a uh, lot a lot lord's lotus uh, face and it has 90 chapters the maximum chapters in the whole of shrimad bhagavatam and uh, it contains nearly 4000 verses and that con contributes about 28 percent of the entire shrimad bhagavatam and many many pastimes are here and that's why we also have covered maximum number of pastimes from the 10th canto of shrimad bhagavatam and uh, uh, our uh, Om Varma, who's our uh, expert, uh, wanted us to make sure that uh, we have some of the Sanskrit verses there. So Om Varma Prabhu, uh, maybe if we can unmute Om Varma Prabhu and uh, Prabhu can read this for us. Om Varma Prabhu, can you read it for us? Okay, so... Brahman Krishna Katha Punya, Madhvir Lok Kamal Apaha. So, what experienced listener or Brahmana could ever get associated while listening to the pious, charming, ever fresh topics of Lord Krishna, which cleans away the world's contamination? Beautiful. So, it means very important here is Natriptet. You see, this is something good, you know. He says, person who who is hearing, he is not satisfied, he is wants to more and more. Krishita gives when he hears more, he is he is, he has got a desire to learn more, more. And it is it is not just at one moment. Nitya Nutra, it is nitya, it is all it's eternal and it is always fresh. You see, this there are two or three words which are very important. Sitten Srinman. And then Nitya Nutra, the three words are very important. Okay, beautiful. So that, that, is the, that is the beauty of this verse. Thank you so much, Prabhu. So, this is 1052 20. So, if you're wondering, oh, I thought uh, we were doing some other chapter today, 67, but here, what we are doing is we are building uh, things up as we get to the past time. We are not there to start the past time yet. So, why are we reading from Srimad Bhagavatam? Why do we need to hear the past times, right? Because these are Srimad Bhagavatam Katha that we collectively read on a monthly basis. So we're setting the stage here. What is the point of reading or hearing uh, the Katha, Srimad Bhagavatam Katha about Lord Krishna? Why we have to read uh, the past? And when we say Lord Krishna, we, we, we are saying, you know, it is, it is all the expansions of Lord Krishna or the devotees of Lord Krishna are also included. We've also uh, reviewed that uh, particular verse uh, a few sessions ago. So here, why Krishna's pastimes because that cleanses away the world's contamination. So that's our only hope. Okay, so maybe we can get uh, Mother Dwarka if you can read uh, 1 to 14, Mother. Okay, maybe we'll get uh, uh, Mother. Can I read? Can... Yeah, yeah, please go ahead. Okay. Um, Srimad Bhagavatam 1.2.14 Therefore, with one-pointed attention, one should constantly hear about glorify, glor, glorify, remember and worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is the protector of the devotees. Should I, I read, read the, the next, next one? one. Yeah, please. Okay. Srimad Bhagavatam 1.2.15 With sore and had intelligent men cut through the binding knots of... Uh, reactionary work karma by remembering the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Therefore, who will not pay attention to his message? Thank you. So again, the, the summary is there on the top line. Hearing and remembering the past times of the Lord cuts the binding knots of karma. So we all have some sort of karma based on the activities that we do on a daily basis, knowingly, unknowingly, etc. So when it is said that just by hearing and remembering the pastimes of the Lord, then it, it, it cuts through the binding knots of reactionary work, which is karma. So it's, it's so easy that that's why we are continuing to do this in spite of all the challenges. You know, we are, we are continuing to do this almost on a monthly basis so that uh, it benefits everybody. It, it's there. It's an open secret. It's there. It's, it's there. We already have the book, you know, we have Veda base, but we will not have the time or the propensity to read and understand it the way that we can do 
when we come to a session like this because chaitanya mahaprabhu said we can only understand shrimad bhagavatam in the midst of devotees right so only when we are there like this in a session like this either here zoom but we are all focused on this topic or when we are in uh, one of the uh, you know in scarborough temple then we are able to understand each one of those past times thoroughly yes we may not remember what we what we went through even though we spent couple of hours maybe after a year but it's all there just below the surface so you just go through it quickly um, you know in no time it will come back to the surface right and it's it's doing the job that it's supposed to do by cleansing the contamination in our heart and cutting through this binding knots of karma it does that so that's why the focus should be there uh, as much as possible during this uh, session of 2 hours okay thank you for reading that and we can get uh, one more uh, devotee maybe gansham prabhu if you can read this hari krishna prabhu hari krishna bhagavad ji uh, shrimad bhagavatam 12.4.40 for a person who is suffering in the fire of countless miseries and who desire to cross the insurmountable ocean of material existence there is no suitable boat except that of cultivating devotion to the transcendental taste for the narration of the supreme personality of god heads past time again thank you so much prabhu so each one of these verses are different it's not what we cover or what we had in the introduction the last month or the previous month i am not recycling these verses right these are because there are so many verses so many scriptures are there so this is one of my hobbies i collect all these fascinating verses that glorifies the hearing of the past times of the lord so here the boat of hearing helps us to cross the material ocean of misery so it is that from shrimad bhagavatam this time uh, we are taking uh, various uh, verses from various chapters and cantos of shrimad bhagavatam so this helps us just hearing the past times helps us cross the material ocean of miseries all of us have miseries uh, you know throughout the day and the week as well so this is something that is a soothing uh 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 to our ears and it's like a boat that will help us cross the ocean of uh, material miseries okay so we can get uh, maybe uh, krishna katha das hari krishna babu hari krishna yes the eagerness to hear about god is a first qualification of a devotee eligible for entering the kingdom of god beautiful so this is a slam dunk verse no complication i think this is something that uh, dravid prabhu brought about uh, during uh, the session last week as well so this is not in the actual verse but it is in the purport by his divine grace ac bhakti vedanta swami shila prabhupad so prabhu with that can you please read that krishna katha prabhu again this is such an important uh, four lines if you can read this again yes prabhu the eagerness to hear about god is the first qualification of a devotee eligible for entering the kingdom of god beautiful you know they say ah if you want to get a job in nasa if you want to get a job in uh, google you have to have this you have to have that as a prerequisite right so then we have a chance to go just the eagerness to hear about god is the prerequisite or the qualification uh, first qualification that is necessary for Uh, somebody who's going to be eligible to enter the kingdom of god okay so this is such a, a great opportunity that is there uh, awaiting all of us and the prerequisite is something that all of you are already aware of and you're already taking part in many many sessions where you're hearing about the uh, past times of the lord so this is a fascinating uh, purport so in the um in the shrimad bhagavatam family tree you see lord balaram is is there uh, you know in the left hand side that towards the bottom part of the screen uh, as the son of uh, vasudev and uh, this is the past time that we are going to hear uh, that deals with uh, lord balaram's uh, activities uh, so the legend has not changed the black text is the actual verse from the same past time purple text is uh, from other scriptures and red text is commentary by our acharyas and uh, nomenclature is sb means shrimad bhagavatam uh when we say sb uh, sp is shila prabhupad vishnu chakravartakur is vct sb 1.1.1 is Ch- canto 1 chapter 1 verse 1 okay so here we are lord balaram slays dvibida the gorilla okay so that's the past tense that we are going to uh read collectively so this is from the 10th canto 
67th chapter. Okay. So here, this is fascinating because it starts off. Now, there are there were 12 cantos. As you know, there are 12 cantos in, in, in Srimad Bhagavatam. And uh, by this time, so we are talking about 10.67. Uh, we know the story that uh, Maharaj Parikshit was cursed to die in seven days, seven nights, and uh, he heard Srimad Bhagavatam uh, till the end, right? So you can say that, um, you know, 10.67, there are 90 chapters in, uh, uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the 10th uh, canto, and then we have uh, not a very big uh, 11th canto, and then a relatively a smaller 12th canto, right? So you can say this is probably by about fifth day, maybe four and a half days, five days, in the seven days of Srimad Bhagavatam that uh, Maharaj Parikshit is hearing, right? Again, this is an approximate guess, right? But see here, suddenly Maharaj Parikshit himself requests Sukhdev Goswami to narrate the pastimes of Lord Balaram. So he's been hearing so many pastimes of Lord Krishna. And then, um, you know, uh, Sukhdev Goswami narrated the pastime of how, uh, uh, you know, Balaram dragged uh, Yamuna uh, to, to, uh, to another uh, location. So therefore, and then he went back to uh, uh, Poundraka pastime, I think. And then, so here, Maharaj Parikshit is requesting Sukhdev Goswami, can you please, I want to hear more about Lord Balaram, the unlimited and immeasurable Supreme Lord. Uh, so please, uh, can you give me, can you, uh, you know, recite more of his pastimes, right? So this is important because Maharaj Parikshit is keen on hearing about the pastimes, uh, you know, uh, about uh, him, um, you know, pulling the Yamuna with his blow. So for a person who's dying in seven days, um, you know, uh, hearing about the incarnations of the Lord is also very important, equally important. Therefore, it's critically important for all of us, right, to hear everything within Srimad Bhagavatam. So we cannot pick and choose. So, uh, you know, for our own benefit, uh, we need to hear about uh, great personalities, expansions of the Lord, as well as great uh, devotees of the Lord. So um, that is why we have picked uh, this topic today. And uh, who is Dvivida? So Dvivida was one of the advisors of King Sugriva from uh, from Lord Rama's time, so from the Treta Yuga. So this is phenomenal, right? So here we know Lord Rama was there in Treta Yuga. Now we are in Kali Yuga. Before that was Dwapara Yuga. When this pastime was taking place, Balaram was there in the Dwapara Yuga. So here uh, this personality Dvivida was living from the time of Lord Ram, and then he continued to live during the time of Lord Krishna. What a fortunate person! In reality, he was, uh, because uh, it is said that he had a brother. So we have a quiz in the end. So please make a note of it. Okay. So Dvivida had a brother, and his name was Minda, and uh, they were actually advisors to. King Sugriva. So we'll, we'll, we'll try to find out who Sugriva is, etc. in the next couple of minutes. But uh, here they were advisors. So they were in an exalted position during the Treta Yuga. And uh, just imagine other advisors for Sugriva were Hanuman and Jambavan. Jambavan is uh, another personality who lived from Treta Yuga to even uh, Dwapara Yuga. Um, you know, there is a pastime, Jambavati is uh, Jambavan's uh, daughter, and uh, she was given uh, uh, in marriage to Lord Krishna, along with the uh, Shamantaka jewel, as you know, it was passed from one person to another person. So Jambavan also lived from Treta Yuga to Dwapara Yuga. Dvibida also lived from Treta Yuga to Dwapara Yuga, and they were all great ministers of Sugriva. And, uh, but the same Dvibida, became the friend of the wicked Narakasura. So we already covered this Narakasura's pastime, uh, I think a few months ago. Uh, this was in the 10th Canto 59 chapter. And uh, he was actually the son of Varahadev and Abhumi Devi, right? Uh, if you remember, uh, he stole the earrings belonging to Indra's mother Aditi, along with uh, Varuna Zambarla and Demigod's uh, playground, which is Maniparvata, which is the peak of Mandara mountain. And uh, Lord Krishna, along with his wife Satyabhama, rode on Garuda and they went to this present day Assam. Uh, the place was called as uh, Pragyotishapura, uh, and uh, that was the capital of Bhavmasura. And uh, this very unique pastime where Lord Krishna used all of his, I mean, five of his most powerful weapons, right? Club, quiver, arrows, disc, and sword, and destroyed the eight layers of uh, Bhavmasura's fortress. And then he killed the five headed demon. Anybody remembers the name of the five headed demon in the Narakasura pastime? 
just a four Mura. letter word mura very good Mura-ri. wonderful yeah mura 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 ri is krishna because he killed mura the demon yeah. so that's how we got the name uh, mura ri yes very good wonderful so all of you remember the so five headed uh, uh, demon was mura he was like the commander in chief of narakasura so who had 10 heads anybody ravana 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 very good ravana who had uh, who has uh, uh, four heads Lord Brahma. Brahma. Lord Brahma. Lord Brahma. Wonderful. Who had three heads? This is a prize question. Who had three heads? Anybody remembers? This is absolutely. Um, uh, Twashta's son. Vish. 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 So Vishwarup, right? We are just throwing these questions, right? So these are the things that once we keep repeating this periodically, then it will come to mind. So it was a, a three-headed uh, son of Twashta, wonderful. So he was Vishwarup. He is the one who who gave this Narayana Kavacha to Indra. Um, so uh, so different heads, right? So five-headed Mura was the sort of commander in chief of this uh, Naraka Sura. So he came and then. Uh, Lord Krishna killed him with the Sudarshan Chakra, and also he killed the seven sons of Mura. If you remember, right? So I'm just doing a quick recap, right? Seven sons of Mura, along with the general of seven sons, etc. And then Lord Krishna finally cut off the head of Bauma Sura again with Sudarshan Chakra, right? So Mura was killed with Sudarshan Chakra. Uh, Bauma Sura was cut with uh, Sudarshan Chakra. Bauma Sura, we already talked about, right? He's the son of Lord uh, uh, Lord Krishna himself in the form of uh, Varaha Dev, and then. Um, mother uh, mother prithvi or bhumi uh, comes uh, and gives all the stolen items uh, that uh, the son had taken you know earring of indra uh, indra's mother uh, varuna zambarla demigods playground etc all were returned along with a beautiful garland and she offers wonderful wonderful prayers and one of the prayers one verse is exactly repeated as that of uh, queen kunti's prayers and that is one prayer is exactly the same of um, uh prithvi uh, bhumi devi uh, offering it to lord krishna after uh, her uh, son was killed remember one verse nama pankaja nabaya nama pankaja malini nama pankajan remember that verse so it's exactly the same verse right thank you yeah so so and then lord goes in and uh, rescues 16100 queens uh, that were captured by narakasura and then later on he marries them and then he and then he's already married uh, uh, eight eight principal queens starting off with rukmani and that's how he's married 16108 queens so all that is part of uh, narakasura past times and also the the concluding part was uh, with with a twist right so he he goes like a fedex uh, uh, or ups and he takes everything and goes to indra loka to deliver uh, it to indra and he gives here's the earring of your mother here's varuna zambarla here's the playground that all of you are missing uh by the way uh my wife uh, satyabama likes this parijata so i'm taking it and what did he say no and there was a big fight and then krishna had to fight with indra and then finally he brings the pari uh, jata to earth okay so that that's uh, narakasura right so he was this friend of this narakasura so why we spent some time understanding about this summary of narakasura past time is that even though this dwivida was such a great personality he was a minister but i also read that he had a problem with lakshmana as well even uh, in the treta yuga and lakshmana said i cannot i'm not going to kill you now because of all the help uh, that we got uh, uh, from uh, other living entities uh, so that's when he had to uh, kill him in the form of balaram in the dwapara yuga so the main reason why dwivida got polluted was because of his um, relationship or association with narakasura so it is said who we are is who we associate with and uh, dwivida associated with uh, evil minded narakasura and he also became uh, inimical towards uh, uh, the lordship and uh, you know, and and uh, our shastra says one should not associate in any circumstance with lowly minded hypocrites very strong right and with those who are not actual devotees of the law but uh, lord but search and find those who are real devotees and have advanced spirituality and associate with them for such association will uplift the consciousness so this dwivida was a very powerful personality and due to associating with narakasura he became evil minded and i just put one more uh, example here so just imagine so this uh, this dwivida 
had the association of Lord uh, uh, Lakshmana and Lord Ram in Treta Yuga. And uh, because this negative um, association has got you know, so much of impact, he, he, he spiraled uh, very quickly downwards, right? And uh, the example that I put, uh, uh, Kala Krishnadasa, uh, now, if you remember, he was going as an assistant with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu during the South India trip. We covered that in one of the classes, right? And uh, remember, there were some nomads uh, or gypsies who enticed him with women, and uh, they were the Batatris from Kerala, and then uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had to fight with those Batatris, and then they came with sword to even attack Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So again, example is bad association is very enticing and it can pull us very very quickly from even the association with the lord who can say anything kala krishnadas was directly associating with chaitanya mahaprabhu but in no time he just joined the other sort of gypsies and nomads and then chaitanya mahaprabhu had to rescue him as well so who's narakasura we already uh, touched base uh, as, as who, who was he. He was the son of uh, the Supreme Lord and Bhumi Devi and we covered uh, who Narakasura was. And uh, who is Sugriva? Because it starts off with Dvivida being the advisor of King Sugriva, right? So who is Sugriva? Who is uh, Sugriva's brother? Anybody? King of... Sugriva uh... is uh, Sun God's... Um... Avatar? Vali, Vali. Uh, Vali. Vali. Vali and Sugriva, Vali right? So, mm -hmm. And Angadan is Vali's uh, son. Very good. Nice summary. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it all starts off, uh, you know, with their birth, right? So once Lord Brahma, it is said that he threw a smear. Smear is something from his eye. You know, you can say it's like a hair of the eye or some dirt he threw from the eyes. And uh, there was a monkey that actually appeared and uh, his name is uh, Vriksharaj. Sometimes it says Vriksharaj and sometimes it's Vriksharaj. He appeared and then uh, Brahma said, you go everywhere in the forest and kill all the demons, right? So then he went into a well and he was transferred into a beautiful lady and then Indra and Surya saw and then they got attracted and then thus, uh, uh, you know, Vali and uh, Sugriva were born. And uh, also Vali was uh, cursed, right? So some of you may remember, uh, if you've gone to Karnataka, Hampi region, uh, there, is a, there is a lake, Pampa Lake. Even Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took part there. We, we, we read that in Chaitanya Charitamrita. So there's a Kishkinda kingdom is there and it's all within this huge Dandakaranya forest range, right? Uh, so it is said that in the Pampa, near the Pampa Lake, Hanuman also rested uh, before he went to Himalayas. And uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took bath in Pampa Lake. Nityananda Prabhu took bath in the Pampa Lake. And uh, also Lord Rama and Lakshmana met uh, Shabari. You remember Shabari? We will taste the food, uh, fruit and give it to uh, Lord berries. Rama. Yeah, berries yeah. and uh, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, yeah. So met uh, Sabari. So Sabari is the disciple of uh, Matanga Rishi, right? And also we read how Parvati Devi performed uh, severe austerities to obtain the Lord Shiva as her husband. And we know Sati reincarnated as Parvati. We covered Sati's pastime in the fourth canto. Uh, during Daksha's uh, activities, right? So, uh, um, you know, these are important aspects when we are talking about Sukriva, right? Like a little bit, maybe we'll spend a couple of more minutes. Um, so, Dundubi, remember uh, there was this, uh, uh, you know, demon, right? He was like a, a like a, in the form of a buffalo. And it is said that he was 10,000 elephants uh, strong, right? And uh, he went to Varuna and he said, hey, come on, fight with me. And Varuna, as usual, said, you know what, I'm old, don't, I'm not here to fight. Remember, even uh, Varahadev, uh, during the Varahadev pastime, Hiran Yaksha went and challenged uh, Varuna and he said, I'm old, I'm retired, please go and fight with uh, Lord Vishnu. So quietly, Dundubi was uh, shown the finger by Varuna saying, you know, go to this person. And he pointed the finger to uh, Himavan. So Himalayas, uh, the personality of Himalayas, because he's so powerful, right? Himalaya is so big, powerful. So the personality is so powerful. But Himavan said, no, 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 I'm a very peaceful personality. I don't go for fight. You have to go and fight with Vali. So Dundubi went uh, to Kishkinda and fought with Vali and Vali very easily killed him. And what did he do in, in a fit of anger? He threw his body so far away. And here Matanga Muni was uh, meditating and, uh, you know, he was doing some sacrifice and the blood from this Dundubi's nose uh, dropped uh, there. And then in the Rishi of Muk uh, Mukachala, that's the place, right? Uh, near this Pampa Lake. And then he cursed this Vali or whomsoever was cause of this. 
uh, will die as soon as he comes uh, near my hermitage, right? And Dundubi had a son called Mayavi, and he said, oh, I'm going to kill the person who killed my uh, my father, right? And therefore he went and, uh, you know, he challenged uh, Wali and Wali chased him and he went into a deep, deep cave. And, uh, and then Wali and Sugriva were going together to catch this, um, you know, Mayavi. And, um, you know, and then uh, Wali being the elder brother told uh, 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 Sugriva, uh, please stay outside because uh, there are many, many entrances and exists within the uh, infrastructure below, but this is the only way he can come. So if he comes, dodges me and comes, I want you to uh, actually, um, you know, take care of him there, right? So, and then uh, because that was said by older brother, uh, Sugriva was waiting outside long time past and said almost a year past. And then finally, uh, Sugriva heard a very terrible sound of a roaring demon and blood flowing through the cave's entrance, right? And Sugriva's heart sank and he thought, oh my God, my brother uh, has been killed by this demon. And then what did he do was, if my brother was killed by this demon, I can be easily killed by this demon and all the citizens will be killed. So he, with great force, you know, with difficulty, he moved a big boulder and he closed the entrance, right? So that the demon, uh, he was assuming has killed his brother and he can't come out. So he went and mentioned this uh, to uh, everybody in the kingdom. And finally, long story short, they made him the king because he was the only person because Wali's son was too young at that point, right, uh, Angada. So therefore, they made him the made him the king. And then uh, it was going on in no time. There was a big sound, right, uh, that came and uh, one angry person came and it was it was Wali himself. And he was so angry and he had already concluded, right? Uh, he had already interpreted that his brother, um, you know, Sugriva had plotted this deliberately when, when the existing king, that is Wali, went inside the cave. He wanted the kingdom, Sugriva wanted the kingdom. So he put the big boulder. That's what he was thinking. And, um, you know, he st then uh, Sugriva started running and that increased his suspicion. See, now he's running, so he's guilty. So anyway, Sugriva went everywhere and Wali was trying to kill him. And he also took his wife, um, you know, Sugriva's wife, uh, Ruma, um, you know, as his own wife. And it went on and on. And then Sugriva knew that uh, Wali cannot go near the Pampa River, right? And then he goes there. And then fast forward several years, Lord Rama comes. And then uh, he has an uh, allegiance with uh, Sugriva. And uh, Rama promised to correct the wrongs of uh, Wali. And then Sugriva will help uh, uh, Rama find... Um, yeah, uh, Sita, right? So that that's uh, that's basically the the connection between Wali and Sugriva. And then finally, Lord Rama helps um, Sugriva kill Wali. And Wali, he's got a nice necklace, right? So he's got this necklace that will prevent him from dying. And then finally, he understands his uh, mistake, and he takes that uh, and uh, he gives it to Sugriva, not even to his son. And then he says, uh, I, my brother, do not get angry with my wife or my son. And he tells his son, Angada, your uncle is not the cause of my death. It's me who's uh, the cause of my own death, right? So that's uh, a little bit about, uh, you know, who's uh, uh, Wali, who's Sugriva. So uh, Sugriva's brother is Wali and, uh, you know, Wali's son is Angada as uh, uh, one of the brothers mentioned. And there's a nice pastime with Angada as well, but we don't have too much time. We can discuss this on a later day. And also, you know, we mentioned that uh, some of the, you know, great personalities lived from Treta Yuga to Dwapara Yuga. That is many, many uh, uh, thousands of years, uh, in fact, millions of years, right? And also there are some personalities called as Sirenjeevis as well. Uh, so who are all the personalities? Anybody remembers uh, who, who lived from Treta Yuga to Dwapara Yuga? Anybody? Duvita, Jambavan, Hanuman. Can you say again? Oh, sorry, Mother. Yeah, Dwebhuda Prabhu. Yes. Jambavan. Very good. And even Hanuman. Beautiful. Is it Muchukunda uh, also? So, who said? Muchukunda. Muchukunda. Uh, Muchukunda. Good and, point. I'm not sure whether he lived from Treta Yuga, though. He lived for very long. Sorry. He was from Satya Yuga, Prabhu. Yeah, yeah, not necessarily, but it was much uh, longer. Yeah, very good. Uh, you know, there are some personalities who live much longer as well. So he lived uh, very long, Muchukunda, because he was sleeping for many, many, 10.50, 10 10.51. That talks about Muchukunda. Very good point. Anyone else? Janaka Maharaj. Remember Janaka Maharaj, father of Mother Sita. He lived uh, during Dwapara Yuga as well uh, from uh, Treta Yuga. Remember in 10.57, 
he meets uh, uh, lord balaram so janaka maharaj also lived uh, from treta yuga to dwapar yuga jambavan very well said uh, mother because he he helped uh, lord rama in the treta yuga and lived uh, during dwapar yuga fought with lord krishna and then he realized that uh, lord krishna is non different from lord ram and as you heard uh, he offered uh, shamantaka jewel and his daughter jambavati to lord krishna that is in 10.56 and as you mentioned the mother hanuman also lived from dwapar yuga to um, you know uh, uh, sorry uh, uh, you know from uh, treta yuga to dwapar yuga and there were a couple of past times that i can remember and all of you will remember right so one is uh, uh, to humble the pride of bhima if you remember um, you know he could not lift um, hanuman's tail when he was going to fetch the 1000 uh, petal lotus for draupadi you remember that and um parshuram and, and who, sorry dev yes dev and parshuram yeah so those are all uh, you know great personalities who live much longer right so as as prabhu mentioned about uh, muchukunda those are all give a very good examples as well uh, yeah fantastic so just to close on this hanuman past time two past times right one is he he humbled the pride of uh, bhima if you remember he could not lift uh, hanuman's tail when he was trying to go and fetch the 1000 petal lotus for draupadi and another time uh, was uh, with arjuna um, you know after the war was over um, so he asked uh, why don't you if rama was really a good archer why did he not build a, a bridge of arrows right that's what uh, arjuna asked and then uh, why did he have to study a uh, struggle with uh, monkeys building this bridge etc right and then um, uh, and then uh, he wanted to meet hanuman to get the answer and then uh, arjuna built this beautiful protective cage of arrows and then you remember he also did that in 1089 if you remember uh, when tens uh, ten sons of a uh, brahmana were all missing one at a time actually mahavishnu was stealing them so that krishna can go and uh, krishna can go and meet uh, mahavishnu anybody remembers that past time yes bro yes bro yes. yeah yes, yeah he bro. created this beautiful cage of arrows right so he's used to that so he said why can't uh, Ra, lord ram have done this so he talks to hanuman and then he builds this bridge and then hanuman quietly puts his foot on that and then everything breaks down right and then uh, hanuman was so um, happy and then next time uh, uh, you know like uh, he, he, an old brahmin comes and actually lord krishna comes as a brahmin and he says can you do it again and then this time uh, arjuna does and then hanuman is so happy to win the second time and then he jumps and jumps and jumps it couldn't uh, nothing can happen because uh, he was thinking of lord uh, krishna this time uh, arjuna and then first time he was proud second time he started thinking of lord krishna so there was this trick so anyway so hanuman lived through dwapara yuga as well from uh, treta yuga and uh, you know as you all mentioned vibida is another personality jambavan janaka maharaj etc right okay fantastic and also i think uh, prabhu i think uh, was that um, uh, i think one of uh, somebody mentioned about uh, parashuram right so there there are there are other personalities called uh, siranjeevis right so we have vyasadev hanuman is also siranjeevi parashuram vibishan uh, ashwatthama son of dronacharya right and then bali maharaj kripacharya markandeya so they are all called as siranjeevi so they live exceedingly long period of time right okay so i think uh, we can uh, go uh, further so dvibida destroys dwaraka right because he is extremely upset that his friend narakasura has been killed by lord krishna so to avenge his death uh, you know he goes and sets fires and burns cities and villages and everything um and uh, 10.59 is where lord krishna kills narakasura and uh, he he destroys the bigger things and obviously the smaller things are inside that are nearby right like first he destroys the cities villages and then the cowherd villages as well right um i'm can you um uh, are you able to see and hear yes bro oh, that's good okay i mean this is obviously not vivida but just to get an idea of how powerful vivida was right this is from king kong movie. Kong is also very
quality is not the best, but uh, you get the idea. And he also set uh, various uh, houses on fire, right? Again, just for us to see the devastation, right? When we read it, yeah, he set houses on fire. But when we actually see some massive fires, actual fires, of course, this is this is from recent, right? But just for us to connect the devastation that fires can cause and if it was deliberately put in place. And that's what uh, Trivida did uh, in most of Dwaraka, it is said. So what we're seeing is one big house that is put on fire and Dvibida did this uh, uh, almost uh, throughout uh, Dwaraka, it is said. So then Dvibida uprooted many mountains. So he's not uprooting a small plant in the backyard, right? He's uprooting mountains. And then with that, he devastated Anartha. Anartha is, um, you know, I did some research. Uh, so this is the northern part of uh, Gujarat. Um, um, and uh, you can see the northern part of, you can say, Dwaraka. Um, uh, in that area and uh, this is actually um, you know Anartha is actually the great great grandfather of Revati so uh, that was his name Anartha and his son was Revata and his son was Kakurmi and we know the past time in the ninth canto where he goes to Lord Brahma to find a suitable uh, uh, you know groom for uh, the bride we all remember that story right Kakurmi that word uh, that does that name ring a bell yes Yes, yeah. well, so, yes, and Kakurmi's uh, daughter is Revati, and after whom this area was called as Anartha, right? Um, so, he went and devastated everything. You know, specifically, India is so big and the world is so big. Why did uh, Trivida go there? Because he knows that that's the place where his uh, friend's killer, his friend is Narakasura, and uh, Narakasura's killer was Lord Hari. Lord Krishna resided there. So, he goes there. Uh, to devastate that area so that uh, he thinks that Krishna will come out and he can uh, easily kill him, right? So, and it is said, our Acharya says, envy has no boundaries, especially for those who are ignorant in spiritual life. And uh, so the most powerful gorilla, he did not come with a big army because he's so confident about his own power and he's extremely powerful. So he came by himself uh, to devastate the kingdom. Uh, knowing very well that Lord will very soon come out because uh, the kingdom is getting destroyed and others are getting, uh, uh, the citizens are unnecessarily getting impacted by this, right? And this is another quiz question for all of you. Dvibida had a strength of 10,000 elephants. We, we are saying that Dvibida is a monkey or a gorilla, right? But his strength was not like a typical gorilla. It is said that he was 10,000 elephants strong, right? Now, I've been to, uh, you know, many of you would have been to Thailand and Sri Lanka. Some of you are from Sri Lanka, right? So, you know, they do a lot of these, um, you know, tricks with these elephants, right? especially in Pattaya Beach in Thailand. And uh, these elephants, you know, we know they're powerful, but you will know the power of them in some of the activities they do uh, in front of people, right? They're extremely powerful, right? One elephant, we're talking about one even baby elephant. And uh, we talk about multiply that by two, by three, 10,000 elephants. These are not exaggeration. And you can see from the devastation that Vivida had caused and what you will hear in the next few slides is that he's extremely powerful personality. And it is said that once he went into the ocean and uh, with his powerful arms, he actually churned the water. We all know eighth canto churning of the ocean of milk, right? And yes. uh, what happened and, uh, you know, all the things came out from there. So 
with his powerful arms, he churned the ocean. And because of that, it submerged all the coastal areas, right? So because of his power. So no human being can stop uh, this Dvevida at this particular point in time, right? And, and you can see this, you know, just a picture I put uh, just to see, show you how, um, you know, um, you know, giant ocean, uh, waves can be created when you're actually churning it with that much power, right? Um, let's see whether you can see this. Vibida churned the ocean and submerged the coastal regions. Again, this is a, a recent one, not the best of quality, but then just to give an idea of the devastation that water can cause, the ocean can cause. Ships are just floating away. Okay, so Dvibida also, he's just not stopping with burning the houses. He's not, he's not, uh, not just uh, happy, just uh, uh, the, the submerging of the coastal areas because his intention is for a uh, lot to come out and uh, thinking that he can kill the lot. And of course, Balaram came uh, in this case, right? Because he was there, uh, but here he's doing more offenses, offenses after offenses. So he's just accelerating his death, right? He lived such a long period of time, but he's doing so many uh, uh, not so good things one after the other just to accelerate his death. That's all he's doing, right? So next, what does he do? He contaminates the sacrificial fires. You know, he goes and urinates there, etc. And uh, the question can be, uh, okay, one may wonder if these sages and saintly persons are so powerful at that time, why can't they curse him and uh, kill him right away, right? So it is said that uh, because Krishna desired that uh, Dvivida has to be killed by Lord Balaram, so these sages did not burn him into ashes. Because when we when we read the past time of um, you know the fourth canto, we we saw how um, you know the Shakti Avesha avatar of the Lord Prithu Maharaj is there, and then the saints and sages actually you know chanted some mantras and then killed. Anybody remembers the name of the son of? Uh, um, Actually, not uh, uh, Prithu Maharaj's son, but Prithu Maharaj's father. What was his name? Vena. Vena. Yeah, Vena. So, uh, because by churning is, uh, uh, you know, part of the body, then uh, uh, the bad things came out. And from the other part, uh, uh, you know, Prithu Maharaj appeared, right? So here, if sages could have done it, they would have done it. They know they can do it, but it is said, our Acharya has explained, they didn't deliberately do it because the intent was for Lord Krishna to send Balaram to kill Dvibida. Okay. How's that picture? Very good. <laughs> <laughs> it's a powerful personality, right? Like whatever yeah. we can do to understand the, uh, you know, his, his power in this, right? Otherwise, if these are like little monkeys that we see in the zoo, they won't find their uh, place in this Srimad Bhagavatam, right? Extraordinarily powerful personalities. Uh, Okay. So, and what else did he do? He's, he's, he's just not giving up. He's just wanting to do more and more and more and more. So he imprisons citizens within caves. Just imagine huge caves are there. He shuts the entrance. He puts the people inside and he shuts everybody inside. What you see on the right hand side is just a, like a cave and a big boulder that is shut. I mean, some electrician or somebody standing there, but uh, the intent of that is, you know, putting a big boulder uh, in, in at the entrance of the cave. There's no way. We, we heard about this Vali and Sukriva past time, right? Vali was so powerful. That's why he was able to push a boulder or a stone as big as this after, uh, you know, prolonged effort, even from his strengths, uh, when you take his strength into uh, consideration. Just imagine human beings like this uh, personality with the red cap, if he's trapped inside, doesn't matter, 300 people trapped inside and somebody puts a big boulder like this outside. There's no way. They're just... They're dead inside, right? There's no way anybody can uh, remove that. So what did he do? The Vibhida imprisoned citizens inside the caves and shut the entrance with big, big boulders, right? And Srimad Bhagavatam says, just like wasp imprisons smaller insects. Um, that's why I put this uh, 11th Canto, 9th chapter, 23rd verse, right? There were 24 gurus of the Avaduta. And one of the gurus was the wasp, wasp, right? So... It is said that maybe maybe we can get somebody to read this. Uh, anybody would like to read what is there in red text? All the three sections. Anybody? Who May I? Read Please. Sure. Wicked people enjoy when others suffer. 
para dukha dukhi i'm happy to see other suffering sorry prabhu right. very good thank you uh, so so the, the opposite right so wicked people enjoy others suffer but the opposite to that that is somebody like lord shiva is para dukha dukhi he is unhappy to see others suffering but here dwibida is happy to see others suffering yes prabhu go ahead one o king once a wasp forced a weaker insect to enter his hive and kept him trapped there in great fear the weak insect constantly meditated upon his captor and without giving up his body he gradually achieved the same state of existence as the wasp thus once one achieves a state of existence according to one's constant concentration so if you can explain this prabhu nicely read thank you prabhu this this 11923 so so again here it is said just as wasp uh, imprisons smaller insects right the impact yes. of that is explained in this 11923 sure so uh, here uh, it is being said that uh, you know the you, the way you are thinking the way your consciousness is shaped that is what you ultimately uh, end up achieving so mm-hmm. here they have given the example of uh, the weaker insect first who's constantly a uh, scare or who's constantly worried about who's going to uh, you know attack it mm-hmm. and uh, gradually i mean without actually even losing up the existence or losing up the life uh, it ends up getting the same state of consciousness or existence as the was something like that yeah yeah so it's it's perfect that that that's exactly what uh, uh, what is mentioned here right so we achieve the state of existence according to one's constant concentration right so as you said in fear uh, this weaker inse- insect was there trapped inside and this wasp was always watching this uh, insect and it it is said that this this weaker insect became like a wasp that was that is the message that is uh, given to us from 11923 right so who we are is who we associate with we already talked about earlier narakasura with uh, dwibida etc right but also what we are focusing on our existence is shaped according to the concentration so i just thought it's a very nice uh, correlation just as wasp uh, imprisons smaller insects the the expansion of that or the result of the imprisonment of the smaller insect by the wasp is given in 11923 thank you prabhu prabhu just a quick question yes, uh, yes. does this can we also extrapolate this and infer that uh, you know this kind of consciousness being shaped is also some way or the other going to affect the subtle body that we are going to get in next life so it's like a chain reaction can we say it that way yeah it, it, i mean this, this whole uh, you know good good question prabhu so maybe some other devotees can chime in as well but okay. uh, the whole idea of uh, devotee association and the whole idea of associating uh, through vapu or vani you know mm-hmm. vani especially shila prabhupad's books is uh, is is you know and and neha bi kramana sosti right 2. Point, uh, what 2.40 so it says where we live now we will start next life right Absolutely. like uh, our spiritual activity so um, you know the concentrated effort the focus that we are uh, uh, you know in right now uh, that is what will shape us not just the body because body is one thing but uh, mm-hmm. you know subtly things uh, change and uh, you know good or bad and that's what uh, will take us into the next life got it thank you prabhu thank you wonderful wonderful thought prabhu yes that's very true thank you okay so maybe uh, we will get uh, some of the devotee to read this very interesting right so this dwibida you know his his aim is to kill krishna which is impossible uh, but he's attacking others giving some reasons etc right so maybe would somebody like to read this uh, 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 red text maybe i'm just going to see who hi krishna yes please go ahead mother uh, okay <clears throat> Would you as like to read example, this? No, uh, go ahead. As an example is given in the Tarka Shang, Shangraha, Sangraha, Sangraha, Indian system of logic and by um, Anambata. Anambata. Um, sorry, your name. Uh, I can't read those three words because I'm on a cell phone. Oh, there was a baby uh, goat. There we go. Okay. Okay. Um, who was drinking water um in a small river a lion came to him and said why did you dirty my water to this the baby 
goat replied, no, sir, <clears throat> you were drinking um, upstream and I was drinking downstream. Therefore, you did not drink my dirty, wadi, dirty water. To this, the lion said, why did you abuse me? To this, the goat said, when did, did I abuse you? The lion said, six months ago. To this, the goat replied, no, sir, six, six months, uh, um, no, sir, six months ago, I was uh, not yet born. Therefore, I could not have abused you. To this, the lion said, okay, if you did not abuse me, then your mother might have. To this, the goat replied, sir, she could not have abused you because as soon as she gave me birth, <clears throat> um, she died. She died. To this, the lion said, okay, if she, if she did not abuse me, your father, your aunt, your uncle, or someone from your home might have done so. <laughs> to this, the goat replied, sir, there is no need to give such a big purport to fulfill your desire of eating me. You can eat me up without trouble. Such was the case of uh, Dvida. He was punishing the innocent because he had lost his right reasoning. As it is said in the Niti Shastra. Anyone whose death is nearing their intelligence work, works reverse to doing, doing right. As doom approaches, mine reverses. Those whom the gods wish to destroy, they first make mad. So I just thought this was a very nice, uh, uh, you know, uh, small uh, uh, instruction from this Tarka Sangraha, uh, where he's, he's just destroying every innocent uh, personality that was there in uh, Dwaraka, giving some reasons. Uh, but his aim was to kill Krishna, which is which is impossible. Thank you, Mother, for reading that. Okay, so Dvibhida, finally, so this is, I mean, if he said, right, his, his end is nearing, he, he's going to die. So uh, because he's, he's made so many offenses in quick succession, he waited for so long from Treta Yuga to Dwapra Yuga, but in Dwapra Yuga, in the last uh, just a few days, uh, he made so many mistakes and offenses, right? He's accelerating his exit. So he hears, suddenly hears a sweet song coming from the Raivataka mountain. Now, where is this Raivataka mountain? I just found out that uh, this is um, uh, this is Gir Girnar mountain. It's, it's actually there, right? In Gujarat, uh, this was called previously as Raivataka mountain. And uh, so here, um, as he was, uh, um, you know, engaged in harassing all the kingdoms and polluting a lot of uh, women, etc., he heard this beautiful, sweet song, wonderful, sweet song coming from these, this mountain area. And uh, the Vishnu Puran also says, maybe we'll, um, maybe Pitambar Das, would you like to read uh, Sanskrit or just the English? Sure, Prabhu. Uh, thank you. So Vishnu Purana says, Kama Rupi Maharupam, Kriva Sasnaya Asesata, Luthan Brahmana Samarda Samarde Dahe, Sasuscharnayati Vanaraha. Vivida taking a huge form at will looted and destroyed all the crops by going around and smashing them. Thank you. So this, this uh, you know, Dvivida is such a famous personality. So don't just think that we all know the ripened fruit of the Vedic uh, tree of knowledge is, uh, 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 you know, our, our Vedic scripture that we are reading, Srimad Bhagavatam, but uh, also Dvivida finds his place. He is referred to in other Puranas as well, as you can see in Vishnu Purana, right? So Vanara, it says Vanara, that is uh, Dvivida, right? Like he's a monkey. So, um, so anything that we read from Srimad Bhagavatam, the, the same personalities are, are, they are important personalities. That is why they are there in Srimad Bhagavatam, but also they are referred to in many different ways uh, uh, in other Puranas as well. So that's why I put that one here. So that's the Raivataka mountain. So he was hearing this sweet song of um, you know, uh, Balaram coming from there. And uh, he saw the most beautiful, most attractive Balaram. So I put the Sanskrit here. So uh, over to you, Om Varma Prabhu. Would you like to read this Prabhu? 
Oh, sorry. Om Varma Prabhu. Prabhu, can we unmute uh, Om Varma Prabhu? Um, actually, he needs to unmute. I can yes, ask. Yes, okay, yes. Okay. That's a Pashit. Yadupatim, Ram Pushkar Malinim, Sudarshini Sarvangam Lalna Ayutam Madhyam. Gayantam Varunim Pitwa Mad Vihelo Lochnam Vibraj Manam Vapusha Prabhindi Varnam. So he was just, we should say, he. he uh, Sudarshaniyam uh, Sarvangam. You see, he just, he, he just we should say, uh, uh, he, he saw Lord Balram, actually, actually, the garland appearing in everything, you know, singing amidst the crowd of young women. And since he had drunk Varuni liquor, his eyes rolled as if uh, intoxicated. His, his eyes were shown brilliantly as he behaved like an elephant in a rut. Beautiful. Thank you, Prabhu. So the, the message here is uh, Vivida is so fortunate, you know, like he, see, we can't just say, yeah, he's a, he's a very bad uh, monkey, but these are great personalities who take part in the pastimes of the Lord. When Lord wishes to fight, you know, Hiranyakashipu, Hiranyaksha were there, they were, we all know who they were, you know, the gatekeepers, etc. Right? So we know. So even this Dvivida, as much as we hate uh, Dvivida as Dvivida for what he's done here, he also gets liberated in the end when they are when they are actually killed by the Lord or the expansions of the Lord. But here, more importantly, here Dvivida, you see, he he was there seeing Lord Ram and Lakshman face to face, and now he's here seeing um, a Lord Balaram face to face as well. So he sees this beautiful form of Lord Balaram with his beautiful garland of roses. So I I try to get got, get the picture that uh, works very nicely with this verse 10, 67, 9, and 10. So he, he's dancing in the midst of his own gopis, it is said, and it's actually it's wife and her companions, our acharyas will explain in the next couple of slides. So he's actually dancing with the young women. And since uh, he drank Varuni liquor, now there is some message about this as well in the next couple of slides, his eyes rolled as if he was intoxicated. So that's the key thing, as if, okay? And his body was shining brilliantly. And uh, he was very strong like an elephant, right? So we talked about 10,000 elephants strong is uh, Dvibida and uh, here Balaram is also very strong. Bala means he's extremely strong, right? When the name giving ceremony was given to him by who was the person who gave his name, Lord Krishna and Balaram's name? Anybody remembers? Gargamuni. Sorry? Gargamuni. Yes, Gargamuni. Which chapter is that? That's a price question. Anybody remembers the chapter in the 10th canto? Uh, can can remember but William. yeah it's it's actually not in the first second or third because name giving ceremony is usually given on the 11th day right 11th 12th day depends on the custom so chapter four. we hear that in the eighth chapter of the 10th canto even though krishna has appeared uh, earlier one two three right uh eighth uh, eighth chapter uh um, Gargamuni is giving the name and he's explaining what is the meaning of uh, bala ram as well okay Okay, so here we talked about Varuni, right? So I just thought I will extract that from the eighth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. Maybe uh, Mother Menaka, are you there? Mother Menaka, the daughter who was there. Hare Krishna, Prabhu. Hare Krishna, Mother. Can you please uh, read, uh, if you can, uh, do you mind uh, reading the 12 items that, 12 things that came from the churning of the ocean of milk from the eighth canto? Churning of the ocean of milk. First one is Surabi Kau. Second is Chai Shubara Vara. Shubha, yeah. Three, Airavatha. Mm -hmm. Fourth, eight great elephants. Fifth, eight she elephants. Sixth, Kashtuba Mani. Seven, Patmaraga Mani. Eight, Parijada flower. Ninth, Asparas. 10th Goddess of Fortune, Sri, 11th Varuni, 12th Danvantari. Beautiful. Thank you for reading that. So these are all the items. Of course, we know initially what uh, what came out, uh, you know, the crocodiles and uh, Timingalas and all of them. And then we have this Halahalar, 
kala kala poison that came and then vishnu said go to lord shiva and then what does lord shiva do he doesn't say okay let me do this service uh, my dear lord no he, he what does he do anybody remembers that it's a good lesson for all the husbands uh, he, he asked parvati right yeah he asked parvati right uh, my dear parvati what do you think uh, you know this will please the lord can i go and do it and of course she says yes right and then of course the hala hala or kala kutta poison is uh, uh, lord shiva drinks and then he gets the name name starts with n anybody after drinking that and saving nilkant nilkant yeah so that's the he gets that name because of that blue sort of stripe that he gets because the poison stops there and he saves the entire not world entire universe right so this the 11th item that came from the churning of the ocean is uh, is is varuni and it is said that uh, he had uh, balaram was drinking this varuni so what is this varuni is it is it confusing is it liquor or what so um, i'm just going to get uh, somebody who, who who didn't read uh, maybe ruchi gopinath prabhu are you there prabhu or mother i am there prabhu okay fantastic so prabhu can you read uh, this paragraph prabhu okay the demigod known as varuna sent his daughter varuni in the form of liquid honey oozing from the hollows of uh, the trees because of this honey the whole forest became aromatic and the sweet aroma of the liquid honey uh, varuni captivated balram ji balram ji and all the gopis became very much attract attracted by the taste of varuni and all of them drank it together while drinking this natural beverage all the gopis chanted the glories of lord balrama and lord balrama felt very happy as if he had become intoxicated by drinking that varuni beverage his eyes rolled in a pleasing attitude he was decorated with long garlands of forest flowers and the whole situation appeared to be a great function of happiness because of this transcendental bliss lord balrama smiled beautifully and the drops of perspiration decorating his face appeared like soothing morning dew hari krishna beautiful prabhu because you read it so nicely it was so clear do you mind reading the next two paragraphs to prabhu sure chilla <laughs> <laughs> sri shridhar swami explains that varuni is a liquor distilled from honey chilla vishwanath chakravarti adds that uh, the goddess varuni the daughter of varuna is a presiding deity of that particular divine liquor the acharya also quotes the following statement from shri hari hari vansha uh, samipam parishita pitra varunena tavanga here the goddess varuni says to lord balrama my father varuna has sent me to you o sinless one revati varuni and kanti are shri baldeva's energies in this regard one should discuss shrimad bhagavatam 9.3.29 and 36 and vishnu purana 2.5.18 another reading is revati varuna sada seve revati and varuni constantly serve you uh, note shrimad bhagavatam 10.10.2 and 3 Two sons of Kuvera drank Varuni or Madhvi. Thank you so much, Prabhu. Thank you. Thank you for reading that. So again, the message here is, um, you know, let's not think. So this is uh, typically from the uh, scriptural perspective, uh, from higher uh, perspective. This is a liquid honey, and it is said that it is a special type of uh, natural uh, aromatic uh, liquid honey, right? And uh, of course, uh, when Kuvera is re- uh, uh, Kuvera's sons are drinking this. and they be misbehaved and they were cursed and they were fortunate enough to be cursed because they saw all the past times of the lord uh, uh, when lord was growing up right as they were trees so this is a little uh, uh, transformation of that uh, in the material sense which is uh, wa- uh, madhvi it is called so so i just thought uh, it'll be very relevant for us to add that there and uh, one may wonder who were the women surrounding lord balaram right so in 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 some of the texts it is said that they are uh, lord uh, balaram's uh, gopis separate gopis not uh, the same gopis as krishna's gopis but uh, dashama tippani so anybody knows what is dashama tippani have you read that so dashama tippani is the 
is is it's actually like a tikka but it's a dilute version of the tikka tikka is the commentary right so this is like a glance of the 10th dasama is 10th right so 10th canto of shrimad bhagavatam which has this 90 chapters sanatan goswami has written beautiful beautiful uh, commentary again it's it's supposed to be like a diluted version of the full commentary that is typically there for uh, shrimad bhagavatam so in the uh, dashama tippani it is said that the beautiful lady surrounding lord balaram uh, was his wife revati and her female companions that's what it is said okay so divida when he saw this beautiful form of lord balaram what did he do he want to make his appearance felt right so he shakes the tree very wildly and he makes some weird sounds in shrimad bhagavatam it is said that it is called as kilakila kilakila means it is a clamorous chirping or chattering it's a sign of disrespect when you when you make that sound it's like you're disrespecting somebody so he's he's deliberately doing that right because he he seen lord balaram there and uh, he wants to um, you know disrespect him by making all this noise and making uh, you know shaking the tree right and these beautiful innocent women they start with lord balaram they start laughing at seeing the silliness of the ape they were not scared they were not laughing with bad intention but they were naturally fond you know have you seen some man or women they are always have the smiley face like that and they smile the hearts are pure right so here not with any bad intention the women were with lord balaram uh, automatically started to laugh uh, in a joking way right because of the silliness of this ape and and what did vibida do he started making some very indecent gestures to the women who were with balaram so his offenses are increasing more and more and more right uh, i mean of course putting anything on fire which we saw and uh, uh, destroying the coastal areas by by crea- creating this mini tsunamis with his arms all those are offenses but now he is is insulting the girls who were women who were with balaram um, you know by making indecent uh, gestures i mean these are common for a monkey per se like gorilla does these type of things but uh, you know so he's so shila prabhupad writes maybe we can get uh, uh, anybody else uh, govinda das prabhu can you read what is there in the red text in the right in the bottom shila uh, prabhupad right the gorilla was so red that even the presence balaram the began to show the lower part of his body to the woman and sometimes he would come forward to show his teeth while moving his eyebrow sir vishnu chakravarti go and state that divida would come right up to the woman and move about and urinate and so on yeah so this is from shila prabhupada right so he was doing all these nasty things and again his death is coming is imminent right so he's just accelerating his death by doing all these uh, offense after offense so divida next what does he do he insults lord balaram by breaking his varuni pot we talked about this honey distilled honey so just imagine if somebody is uh, you know your site uh, or or your, your manager is drinking coffee uh, in his office of course i mean do what he's don't but if when somebody is drinking and then we go and tap this uh, coffee pot uh, or cafe container down right that's very insulting right like it's very rude for somebody to do that so here divida insulted lord balaram by breaking his varuni pot and he started laughing at lord balaram and he started pulling all these <coughs> girls clothing right because he's got this false pride and uh, not only insulting balaram but he's also pulling all these women's clothing so it's it just getting worse and worse by the minute right so then finally balaram decided this is breaking of lord's part and pulling the women clothing was enough is enough so he takes his club and his plow to kill the ape okay so <laughs> this is his end is nearing and what does dwibida do even after offending the women balaram etc he takes a big sala tree we'll see what is a sala tree that's one of the most powerful trees that you can think of he takes this huge uproots this huge tree and then he rushes towards the lord and actually he hits the lord with this heavy tree powerful uh, strong tree um, 
with uh, on the lord's uh, in balaram's head right so the lord enjoys fighting that's why the lord can very easily kill dravida in no time right away he would have but then it's not interesting for us who are reading this right when you see a movie what happens right initially the the hero gets hit um and then he wins in the end right like initially he gets hit right like let it be amitabh bachchan i'm just bringing a material thing right rajini kant anybody it's not like they win right away right they get hit and they're almost down and then they come up so it's all coming from these past times right and you'll see what prabhupad says about games so um even even uh, you know in lord krishna's past times right hiran yaksha actually beats um, you know uh, varahadev initially right he's he's beating varahadev and many other past times salva past time as well uh, krishna suddenly drops you know uh, bows are dropped because it hits his bow so it just to activate uh, the interest of uh, everyone who's reading it uh, it's there so vivida struck lord balaram with the sala tree in the hand now this sala or shala tree is also called as cannon ball tree because of the fruits that it's got like the cannon ball right but the trunk of this tree is very heavy and there's a pretty um, you know a tall tree as well so in that uh, mountainous area he selects uh, the type of trees that will have maximum impact on balaram so this is the tree that he used first to hit balaram on his head of course it didn't have any impact and then what does lord do lord balaram uh, struck dvivida with his sunanda club what is kaumodiki club i thought we read somewhere kaumodiki yeah. what is krishna club oh. very good very good yeah. very good so so i just put this uh, just for us to remember so lord krishna's uh, you know uh, panchayuda according to chaitanya bhagavata adi uh, kanda is, is the, these five weapons right shanka that is conch is called panchajanya the chakra we know sudarshana lord's uh, gada is called as kaumodiki as you prabhu mentioned and lord's sword is called nandaka and lord's bow is called sharanga what is the bow of arjuna gandiva gandiva, gandiva. gandiva. very good and who gave gandiva bow uh, shiva 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 shiva's gandiva bow but who gave it anyway so that will be in that uh, kandava forest uh, actually varuna and agni you know we talked about it right so that's how the gandiva bow was given uh, actually to arjuna even though it it belongs to shiva etc etc right okay so lord krishna's chariot driver is daruka and lord krishna's horses because we are explaining about lord krishna i just thought um, you know we'll put everything in one page so if you didn't use your phone yet this is the first time you're going to use the phone take a picture of the screen okay just stay, bring it closer to the screen and take a picture because you will save lot of time okay so these are all lord krishna's uh, five weapons and lord krishna's uh, you know four horses right very, very uh, repeatedly you will see this in many past times can anybody again this is a price uh, question right can can anybody think of the names of the horses in which chapters these horses uh, are referred to just a wild guess or if you know oh, 1052 okay. 1052 1053 that the rukmini past time yes yes prabhu yes yes rukmini is past time yes because he goes there to actually retrieve uh, to to get uh, uh, rukmini very good anyone else what that i can think of i can think of right now i can think of i didn't prepare i'm just thinking. when he goes to fight uh, this uh, the actual mahabharat when it takes place the chariot so what what five horses are there those are five horses that is not uh, krishna's horses this four oh, krishna's okay. horses are four okay. four horses okay can anybody but, think but when krishna and arjuna went to see mahavishnu at beautiful, the time beautiful beautiful very Thank good you. very good fantastic yeah those are the two things so some of you may remember something more from shrimad bhagavatam but uh, definitely these two cases where krishna goes to get rukmini and krishna and arjuna goes to retrieve the 10 sons of the brahmana from mahavishnu can you believe that mahavishnu steals the sons so that he can have darshan of lord krishna right uh, and the uh, lord krishna goes he, he, he remember he goes in this chariot this the, these horses fly too it's not like they travel on the road alone right they're f- flying through the different layers of the universe and then uh, there are multiple layers of the universe right we read from the fifth canto as well and uh, each one is millions of uh, miles uh, uh, long uh, or wide and then it's so dark and then what what does lord krishna do so that these horses can see properly he releases his sudarshan chakra exactly so the sudarshan chakra can do multiple things it can bring in light 
or it can cause um you know darkness um it can play double role can you think of the past time where it where it um, made dark uh, everything dark jaidratha 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 yes yes jaidratha past time even before the sun set krishna released this uh, uh, sudarshana chakra and then it went and covered the sun so that means if it is always shiny then this uh, uh, shine from the sudarshana chakra will will would not have served the purpose so it became dark it darkened the sun like an eclipse so sudarshana chakra is uh, versatile right it can do m- multiple things okay and lord balaram's principal weapon because here where we started off with this in the black text a black text uh, uh, it, it said that um, he hit this dvivida with the sunanda club right so the club of balaram is sunanda and the plow of balaram you may not have seen it or heard about it it's called balachitta okay so that's the plow of lord balaram okay so next dvivida this, this fight has started you know back and forth they are fighting with each other and lord balaram is going along with this fight because he wants to fight he is enjoying that right dvivida strikes the lord two more times with two more huge trees right and what does balaram do very easily he strikes them with into hundreds of pieces with this with this uh, club right so none of these trees can do anything and see his technique dvivida's technique right even though he is 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 a, a gorilla um his idea is he's stripping the tree trunk trees with all the leaves why because the impact will be more right because sometimes the leaves are there then it can be a soft landing right when 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 you hit somebody with a trunk that has got a lot of branches and there are a lot of leaves then the impact will be less so this gorilla wants the impact to be more so he's stripping the tree and the tree trunk of all the leaves so that is just this hard rough surface of the tree that will impact uh, balaram okay and then uh, we we mentioned that none of these things can have any impact on lord balaram because he is the supreme personality of god and he is full of strength right so maybe i'm going to request uh, any anyone else who did not read uh, yet yes, uh, prabhu can ahead. i prabhu please yeah shrimad bhagavatam 10.8.12 gargamuni said this child the son of rohini will give all happiness to his relatives and friends by his transcendental qualities therefore he will be known as rama and because he will manifest extraordinarily bodily strength he will also be known as bala moreover because he unites two families vasudeva's family and the family of nanda maharaja he will all be known as sankarshana beautiful thank you thank you for reading that mother very nicely read and uh, yeah so that's the confirmation that the names of lord krishna and balaram are given in the eighth um uh, eighth uh, uh, chapter of the 10th canto which means which means it's after uh, putana past time because putana past times and shakatasura and trinavarta all that is already over right after the child was born but actual official name giving ceremony so you can remember you can think of right all that happened before that 11 days or 12 days uh, since uh, after krishna was born because in the eighth chapter the name is given so shakatasura trinavarta um you know all that uh, happened uh, way before that even the official b- before the official name was given so anyway the reason why i i just thought uh, it'll be relevant to put this 10 8 12 is because i mean what is this tree and everything the biggest tree the biggest mountain all that has got no impact on balaram because he is named you know we can have our own sons and daughter uh, sons and relatives you know they may be called as balaram right but they are actually <laughs> they may not be strong enough right but in this case he is named as balaram because of what he possesses right gargamuni names him uh, because of that right uh, manifest extraordinarily bod- extraordinary bodily strength so dvivida became so after he was hit by this uh, you know um, uh, club he became brilliantly decorated by the outpour of blood and it is said it looked like a mountain beautified by red oxide you know shrimad bhagavatam is so beautiful in the description that you can imagine how it is you can see the movie you can see the picture in your mind right but it will help if we have um, you know the actual things that we can see in reality around us right so this is one of those uh, mountainous area in peru this is an actual mountain you can see that it is like a red oxide that is there you can see on the left hand side and actually there is a river that flows and that river is like a blood flowing it's 
purely red color. You can you can check that out in the website as well in YouTube, right? It's a beautiful red river that flows across these uh, mountains. And uh, the example is exactly given in Srimad Bhagavatam. Dvida became brilliantly decorated by the outpour of his own blood, like the mountain beautified by red oxide. Okay. And as Dvida hurled more and more trees on the Lord, Balara, uh, on Lord Balaram, the forest became treeless. Actually, the whole forest was zeroed out with, for any trees. All the trees were uprooted and thrown. Now, just imagine if you want to remove a, a, a branch or a, or a shrub from your backyard, how difficult it is, right? So you need this equipment, that tool to dig it for half an hour, one hour to take it out. Forget about uprooting a tree. You know, there's no way we, even with the strongest weapons, uh, tools that we have, you can't uh, you can't uproot uh, even a small tree you know in a five foot tree five feet tree or something these are huge trees that this uh, dvivida is uprooting just imagine the power of this monkey just uprooting like that you know it's like taking a pen and throwing it's almost like that right but these are deep rooted trees so he took more and more and more and more trees but it had no impact on this extraordinarily powerful balaram right so it is said, you know, so we can see here, right? Tree, trees are usually deep rooted and rarely get toppled. Uh, you know, very, very unlikely. You see that by devastating hurricanes, they get toppled over, right? Uh, even strong winds are there. They are able to sustain it. As you can see the picture on the right hand side, right? Like palm tree and things like that. They never get uprooted. They're really strong. Any tree for that matter, right? It's not like some trees are easy to be uprooted by five of us. Even five of us, 10 of us try to uproot a tree can be. We cannot, right? We, we cannot. There's no way. But here it shows the power of this monkey where it can just, uh, gorilla, we can just easily uproot it in a split second and then throw it so far with so much force. Now, I just thought I will digress and put uh, lessons from the trees. We all know Trini, uh, Trinadapi, Suniche, now we know that uh, verse, right? Uh, um, you know, how we have to um, have that humility and patience, etc. But here, um, I, I, I put three, these are three different slides, right? One on the top left-hand side, trees that grow in groups of at least five survive hurricane force winds better than those that grow individually. So the source is University of Florida Urban Forest Hurricane Recovery Program. So this is not from a church or from a temple, right? So it's a fact of the matter, um, you know, united we stand, divided we fall like that, right? So if you are there together, you know, as a family, as a community, etc., cetera, then uh, there is chance of survival, right? Otherwise, there is no chance, right? Um, you can break one uh, stick, but if you put 10 sticks together and tie them up, you can't break any of them. Right? So that's what it said on the top left-hand side. And the bottom, as you can see, the oak tree is extremely strong. Why? They're all connected to each other at the bottom. Right. So in the surface, you don't see that. But beneath the surface, they're all the roots are all well connected um, uh, so that they all survive uh, during challenging times. Right. And on the right hand side, we see the palm trees, right? Palm trees survive hurricanes because they bend and not break in violent winds. Right. So we had to be flexible in our life. So I just thought it's not related to the past times, but we just thought because the trees were being uprooted. In general, trees don't get uprooted easily because they grow in groups, because their roots are connected, uh, especially for oak tree and few other trees, the roots are connected at the bottom. And also if we are flexible, you see, you know, uh, the grass is never uprooted in spite of any big hurricanes and because it nicely bends, adjusts, right? So flexibility. So these are some lessons to be learned for all of us, right? So Lord Balaram pulverized. So what happened is the forest was devoid of any tree. All the trees were uprooted and hurled on Lord Balaram and he broke all of them uh, into thousands of pieces. Then what did uh, Gorilla do? What did Bivida uh, uh, do? He started throwing huge stones. We're not talking about our palm side stones. You saw the stone or the big boulder that actually was there, uh, you know, putting in the mouth of the cave. Um, you know, that type of boulder, huge boulders were taken. And then what did Lord Balaram do? He took all these, um, you know, he took his, um, uh, what is his uh, uh, club's name? Anybody remembers that? Just wanted to make sure everybody's uh, alert. What is the name of the club? Sunanda? Sunanda. With his Sunanda, like a cricket bat or a baseball bat, he was eating these huge rocks. You can say stones that were th thrown at him like a baseball 
a, a player hitting a home run or a, a cricket player hitting a, a sixer, right? So this is the origin of cricket and baseball. Who says that? Can somebody read this purport by Shila Prabhupada, the, who did not read yet? Anybody? Shall I, Prabhu? Please. Origin of cricket and baseball. Shila Prabhupada writes, when no more trees are available, Dvivida took help from the hills and threw large pieces of stone like rainfall upon the body of Balarama. Lord Balarama, in a great sporting mood, began to smash, smash those big pieces of stone into mere pebbles. Even today, there are many sports wherein people enjoy striking a ball or similar object with a stick or bat. This sporting propensity exists originally in the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who playfully, Leelaya, pulverized the deadly boulders hurled at him by the powerful Vivida. Beautiful. So this is Srila Prabhupada's purport, right? So all this sport, he didn't say cricket and baseball, but Srila Prabhupada is saying uh, sports where you strike a ball or similar uh, object with a stick or a bat. So he's almost saying that. But uh, in reality, for us to understand, you know, uh, cricket is a game where you hit the ball with a bat. Baseball is uh, similar to that. So I think I may have something for a couple of minutes for us to take a break. So again, uh, Srila Prabhupada is saying, even today there are many sports wherein uh, people enjoy striking a, ba a ball or similar object with a stick or a bat. You know, baseball is uh, similar to that as well, right? This ball's hit a long run again. That's number 30. Where will this one land? Come close again. Are you kidding me? 505. I like it. Finally. 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 That's the longest home run hit in baseball this year. I don't recall a 500-foot home run in the StatCast era. Touch him all time for Trevor Story. Number 30. We're tied at three. That one of the concourse again. He just didn't pull it quite as much as the last one. And he didn't fall down this time either after he hit it. Two absolutely towering shots to left field for Trevor Story. His talent is amazing, and it's coming together beautifully down the stretch. Stanton drills it deep left field like a rocket up into the seats it goes. Okay. So just, uh, just uh, you know, uh, for us to connect. So even when we occasionally are seeing something, you know, it'll make us remember this pastime of uh, Lord Balaram uh, with uh, Dvibida. Then 
what so after the stones failed so initially it was all the trees that he threw on lord balaram nothing succeeded everything failed it was all shattered into hundreds of pieces then all the powerful boulders and rocks and stones were thrown at lord balaram zero impact he ran out of that then finally dwibida comes and he punched the lord with his fist right so uh, you know he clenched his fist and uh, it is said that his palms were as long as a palm tree and then he came before lord balaram and punched the lord right so and then this also of course did not have any impact and finally the lord decided enough is enough i've had enough fun with uh, this fight with uh, dwibida and uh, what did lord do because he he had no weapon right the bibida the monkey had no weapon at this point in time no trees no stones so he came bare handed and he hit uh, balaram with the with with his fist so the actual moral here is you know he threw his plow and the club that's the proper way to fight right uh, because the other uh, party was uh, weaponless so he dropped his weapon and then uh, with 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 his fist he hit uh, vivida in the collar bone and then that proved to be fatal for vivida so for those of you are wondering where is this collar bone so that's where the collar bone is and uh, with that vivida dropped dead and he didn't go down just like that as you can see his his collar bone uh, is punched by lord balaram and uh, you know that 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 could be the origin of the boxing as well right like uh, you know punching other person so everything has got a origin in our scriptures in the past times of the lord and uh, and he didn't just go down right it is said dwibida fell down dead and the impact was felt across the mountains and cliffs right so it was almost like an earthquake that was uh, starting or happening when this huge dwibida fell down and uh, this confirms the size and the power of of this ape right so and it it and everything felt like the wind uh, tossed a uh, uh, boat at a sea right so just for us to see how it is you see the see the boat in the sea you know being tossed uh, in the in the midst of uh, a severe storm and that's how the whole ground was shaking according to shrimad bhagavatam okay so we just get an idea of that so Uh, so uh, maybe prabhu will uh, we're almost there uh, uh, at the end so om varma prabhu do you mind uh, reading this as well because you wanted some of the sanskrit verses we put that uh, or is there anyone else who loves to read the sanskrit uh, would like to read or om varma prabhu okay and if anybody else wants this we can, can do so no no go ahead prabhu we want you to okay okay jay shabdo namah shabdo you see that is very important jay shabdo namah shabdo साधु साधुवती चाम्बरे अम्बरे मीन आसमान में ओल थिंग इन द स्काई जय 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 शब्दो सुर सुर सिद्ध मुनि मुनि इंद्र नाम सुर सिद्ध सुर देवता यू नो दो गॉड्स यू नो स्मॉल गॉड गॉड एंड एंड मुनि एंड मुनि एंड यू सी अकम्प्लिश मुनि एंड यू सी इंद्र नाम आशीद कुछ kusam barshinam and they did they did kusam they did shower flowers kusam kusam mean flower asid sarv barshinam they did shower flowers upon it that's very good you see that's nice so so, so in the heavens the demigods the perfect they mystics, were very happy they were very pleased yeah not only the demigods right the mystics who are in the higher realms and sages who are much higher near uh, brahma loka all of them were watching this live telecast of this live uh, pay per view event we say right before See, that's right be. <laughs> sur sur mean devta you know and sid sid mean sid purush muni na muni also indra na muni muni indra na you see and those they are you know they, they Uh, they were very very accomplished muni muni people you see muni yeah. uh, rishis you see all that they were very happy. all all of them right not just uh, demigods but mystics sages everybody so that means it shows how powerful and this wicked was this divida because it was a normal thing nobody will praise right like these are not only uh, you know who's on earth but uh, it doesn't refer that but obviously because the people were devastated you think the people are not happy in dwaraka whose house were burnt and uh, uh, whose coastal houses were uh, 
ground except so everybody on earth were happy and demigods who are in indra loka and then mystics who are in much higher uh, planetary system muni loka etc and the sages etc all were extremely happy because it's such a extraordinary feat uh, because this 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 uh, gorilla was extraordinarily powerful and wicked as well and after that the lord went back to dwaraka because this was in the outskirts and near the mountain area as we read and then uh, the lord went back to dwaraka so that's this fascinating past time from 1067 uh, we try to make it interactive and uh, interesting by putting some video clips that are relevant to what is stated in the uh, purport like propat said origin of games etc as well as king kong was destroying all this setting things uh, you know from the movie as well all these hollywood movies come very handy to us so a quick summary where we wrap things up right so just so that because we talked about bali sugriva etc angada etc but those are not part of the past time but it was connected to that now we'll strictly um rephrase the sequential activities of this past time so initially king parikshit uh request sukhdev goswami to narrate the past times of lord balaram even though there were so many past times of lord krishna that were continuously being narrated so he was so interested even though his death is nearing it's almost you can say uh, five days uh, are uh, done only one or two more day two more days maybe is remaining he's asking can i please hear some past times of lord balaram and then uh, sukhdev goswami starts to narrate this wonderful past time about dvida and dvida is one of the advisors of sugriva and anuman also was an ad, uh, advisor to sugriva as we heard uh, and he lived from treta yuga all the way to dwapara yuga and uh, he was the friend of narakasura and because narakasura was killed by lord krishna he want to avenge his death so he set fires to the cities and uh, he uprooted mountains and devastated the province of anartha which was lord krishna with that's where lord krishna lived all in gujarat area and vivida with the strength of 10000 elephants churned the ocean and submerged the coastal region and he also contaminated the sacrificial fires of great sages and he imprisoned the citizens in caves and shut the entrance so they they all buried and dead there and uh, at that point in time he hears the sweet song from the raivataka mountain and he that was sung by lord balaram and he sees lord balaram was singing and was surrounded by uh, women and uh, dwibida made his appearance by shaking the trees and making some weird noises and the women who were also innocent began to laugh seeing the silliness of the ape and dwibida made many indecent gestures to the women who were all with lord balaram and dwibida also insulted lord balaram by breaking his varuni pot and laughing at him and by pulling the girl's clothing so that was the end of it lord balaram took his club and plow to kill what did dwibida do initially took the sala tree which had this cannon ball type of fruits and then he struck lord balaram in retaliation lord uh, uh, then um, you know balaram also uh, struck dwibida with the sunanda club and we saw the picture dwibida became brilliantly colored by the outpour of blood like the mountain beautified by red dots these are very beautiful uh, ways where we can visualize what's going on and then dwibida also continues to it continues to strike the lord with more trees finally the trees were zero in the whole forest so he started taking big big rocks and hurling at uh, lord balaram but with ease like hitting a home run or a sixer with his sunanda club lord krishna was breaking all these rocks that were hurled at him and then finally dwibida did not even have rocks so he came and punched the lord with his fist because balaram is full of strength so in retaliation lord balaram decided enough is enough so he takes his own fist he drops the plow he drops the uh, uh, club because it has to be even fight so with with his bare fist he punches in the collar bone of uh, this dwibida the monkey and then uh, he fell down and uh, it was like an earthquake uh, the impact was being felt and the demigods mystics and sages praised the lord for killing dwibida and then the lord finishing his du- duty of killing dwibida went back to dwaraka so that's the uh, uh, summary so any lessons to be learned from 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 the devotees who were patiently uh taking part in this session we are almost at the stroke of 6 so anything that you can learn from this past time because it's not just you know uh, pleasing to the ears and eyes these past times but what it conveys to us that's the most important part of why we are having the shrimad bhagavatam katha 
So anybody would like to comment on anything that strikes you as lessons to be learned or something that is, um, you know, um, good for you to take away. Prabhuji, association matters. Very good. If you, as if you associate with devotees, then you, you can be more into devotional service. But then if your association is deviated, then it's very easy to deviate from very good. Service Wonderful point. And, 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 and we may be thinking, uh, we should not even think that, yeah, I have uh, many um, advanced devotees uh, that I'm associating with. Uh, so what? Uh, some not so great personalities. Yeah, a let, little bit of association is okay. But then that little bit of association with bad sort of the bad association is powerful enough to pull us away and cause us destruction. In this case, we saw Dvivida had the association of Sugriva, had the association of Hanuman, Ram, Lakshman, all that was good. But with that limited exposure, but it is so powerful with Narakasura, then, you know, his destruction was actually amplified and accelerated. Same thing with uh, Kala Krishnadas. He was actually serving water to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Lord Krishna himself. He's washing his clothes. He's carrying his, his, uh, his, his water pot, etc. during the South India trip. In no time, due to the bad association of that Patataris and the women there, he, he, he almost got uh, lost, right? And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu protected him. So wonderful point. Association is very important. Um, you know, constant association with advanced uh, devotees who are more advanced than us is what the scriptures tell us so that we can always look forward to, um, you know, improving our sadhana and where we are uh, at this point in time. Great point. Anyone else? No, I think, uh, can I make a point? Bro? Please. Yeah, taking revenge for his friend who has done misdeeds, uh, bring your own destruction. Wonderful. So taking revenge. So revenge in that, uh, you know, you, I think the key point that you're trying to make is revenge. It's, 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 it's something that, uh, you know, things do happen according to destiny. It's all the higher, uh, 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 you know, realm of uh, reality that is taking place uh, by power, you know, Krishna's uh, wish things are happening. And uh, so people who try to undo that, right? So we see that repeatedly uh, in, in Srimad Bhagavatam, especially in this um, you know, the later part of the 10th canto, whatever is happening in Dwaraka area. So Krishna kills somebody and that friend wants to kill Krishna and then he gets killed. His friend gets killed. He, you know, it's like a chain vicious reaction where they're not learning from that as well. Even during Kamsa's pastime, right? Like each one of those demons come, they get killed and they next person comes thinking that no no i'm going to and a case in point is this uh, family of putana agasura and uh, who's the other brother uh, bakasura all these are you know it's a very infamous family right uh, putana is the sister but the two brothers are agasura and bakasura right so yeah yeah you kill my sister that was in 10.6 so then uh, agasura wants to kill and then bakasura comes to you know so it, this this uh, revenge is uh, is is not a good thing is that uh, that that's your point right prabhu Yes, Prabhu, that was my point. Wonderful point, wonderful point. Yeah, we didn't think about that. Very good point. Anyone else? Yeah, Prabhu, I, I just like to make uh, one point. I said that a lot tolerate, can tolerate everything, but when you disrespect any women, Lord cannot tolerate. So Lord was tolerating everything. But as soon as David started disrespecting uh, Lord's uh, concerts, mm -hmm. he he actually became angry and he killed. That's, uh, that's why I'm thinking this way. Yeah. The Lord never tolerates disrespecting women. And we learn from our, our scriptures. Very good. So repeatedly we see this. Uh, yeah, so that was actually the, um, you know, uh, catalyst for Lord to, um, you know, finish this. Uh, uh, At that time it was like a game and he was doing things. But uh, yeah, so that was a very good point. Yeah, so there are certain things that cannot cross the line. Uh, I mean, of course, uh, setting house on fire and all those things were bad enough. Still, he would have been killed uh, even for that. But then his, his exit was uh, accelerated because of this breaking of the part of uh, Lord Balaram as well as, uh, you know, disrespecting women. Good point, Parvo. Thank you. Anyone yes, else? Prabhu, uh, and uh, one more point is Vinash Kale Vipreet Buddhi. Any person who is uh, wicked and uh, selfish and egoist, his downfall is imminent. Wonderful. <laughs> yeah, so we cannot continue to do, um, you know, the bad things that uh, somebody was doing because uh, it's, it's going to come to an end. It may look good, it may feel good, but uh, the end is uh, very near. 
Vinasakale Viparita Murti. Very good point. Thank you, Mother. Mother Padmakshi, anything? Yes, Prabhu. Um, you should gauge your enemy's strength before you do something abominable. Right? Like he wasn't, um, he didn't, he had no understanding of um, Lord Balaram or Lord Krishna's strength. Mm -hmm. And you should use your anger and for the right cause. Like Prabhupada you always used to say, right? Like it's not wrong. I mean, it's not advisable to be angry, but that angry will become hatred and then things take a negative turn. But then you should know how to uh, use your anger in a positive way. Otherwise, you're going to land in self-destruction. Yeah, yeah. Um... But definitely, yeah, engaging the um, enemy's strength and uh, even from material perspective, right? Uh, gauging the mm -hmm. opponent's strength. It could be in a sport. We, we saw some clips of sports as well, right? We should yeah. know what our weakness is, what our strength is, what our uh, opponent's weakness is, strength is. Um, same thing, right? Like even for writing an exam or going through an exam, which is all part of our life uh, as we grow up, uh, we should know what our strength is, what our weakness is, and then work on more of our strength and, uh, you know, have less of the weakness, right? So it can be construed in many different ways. So I think from your standpoint, uh, it's a good point because in 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 in, in many many pastimes we see are in all the pastimes right it's, it's they they don't know who god is right they don't know that yeah. god is unlimited uh, unlimited power and they still think that yeah i'm going to kill you from from putana to yeah he's just a baby you know what can he do right so uh, uh, looks are deceptive uh, don't judge the book by the cover uh, and 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 also knowing uh, who God is, right, basically, right, and our limitation as we may be powerful within our realm of reality, but when it comes to God, we are nobody. Infinite was this infinitesimal, right? That's what mm -hmm. we are, infinitesimal. Good point. Prabhu, I have a question, Prabhu, if that's okay. Please. Uh, you know how uh, you said uh, Lord Krishna's plan was uh, uh, he wanted Drivida to be killed by Lord Balaram? And Lord Balaram has been in Dwapara Yoga as Lakshmana and Vivida was also in the period of Treta Yoga yes. as, a, as a monkey. So was there any contact between them that the, that the story, yes. the pastime is ending like this? Yeah, I'm not sure whether you were there in the beginning. Um, so our Acharyas, uh, one of the Acharyas mentioned that uh, he misbehaved. It's not like he was, uh, you know, he had this Narakasura, Narakasura's um, association was the worst thing that accelerated. It doesn't say who's a bad association he had in Treta Yuga, but he, hints, he insulted uh, uh, Lakshmana in Treta Yuga as well. And then he challenged uh, Lakshmana to fight him even at that time. So even after he was the minister for Sugriva, there was some issue with Lakshmana and he wanted uh, to fight with Lakshmana and Lakshmana said, no, oh. I'm not going to fight with you now. And mm. uh, it will be during Dwapara Yuga. So Lakshmana became uh, Balaram and then that's when he fought with him and killed him. That's why even though he came to attack Krishna, because Krishna is the one who killed uh, Narakasura. It was not Balaram mm -hmm. who killed, right? Mm -hmm. But then Krishna, uh, you know, because of the past and how it was structured, it was uh, Lakshmana in the form of Balaram who was supposed to kill. Okay, Prabhu. Thank you. Great question. Any, anything else? Um, uh, okay, quickly, let's go. For a person destined to uh, die in seven days, hearing about the incarnation of Lord Krishna is as important as hearing about uh, Lord um, about uh, Lord Krishna himself, right? So about Lord Balaram, Narshimadev, etc. So King Parikshit personally requested Sukhdev Goswami to narrate the pastimes of Lord uh, Balaram, right? So let's not think, okay, only Lord Krishna, only Lord, whatever is there in Srimad Bhagavatam is significant, right? So that's why we thought we'll bring in Lord Balaram and get his mercy as well because Nityananda Trayodisi is coming up uh, later this month as well, correct? Anybody, everybody remembers, right? Nityananda yes, Prabhu. Yes. Yeah, so it'll be good uh, blessing to get, uh, you know, from Nityananda Prabhu, Balaram, Lakshmana, all of the same. Uh, lifespan differs from one living entity to another, uh, to others, right? Divida, Divida lived for many thousands of years and Divida had the association with Lord Rama and Lakshmana in the Treta Yuga, but deteriorated dramatically due to bad association with Narakasura and uh, uh, Krishna uh, Kaladas we talked about. And Vivida destroyed, uh, you know, he did many things, right? Destroyed towns, harassed saints, sages, insulted women, and the Lord himself. Thus, his end was accelerated by sequential offenses. 
and the Lord enjoys fighting. Therefore, Balaram did not will uh, kill Dvivida right in the very beginning, right? He could have done that, but he wanted to have that pleasure of fighting with uh, this powerful personality. Uh, the biggest trees, the biggest boulders, the most powerful fists had zero impact on Lord Balaram because Bala means extraordinary bodily strength. And the sporting propensity had the origin in the wonderful pastimes of the Lord and his incarnation. So Lord Krishna taming the seven bulls uh, to marry uh, Nagnajiti. Remember, we covered this in one of the pastimes. Um, that is one of his uh, wives, uh, Krishna's wives. Uh, so Krishna... Um, so what is that? What is the current pastime that you can think of? Krishna taming the seven bulls. You heard the, I've been to uh, uh, Spain many times, you know, the matador and the bullfighting is very common there. Yeah. Right. So, so our material games and sports have got the origin in, 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 in the scriptures, right? Boxing, cricket, uh, baseball, etc. from you can think just from this past time you can see the origin uh, there Srila Prabhupada that mentioned there at least for bat and ball like uh, baseball and cricket and you can think of movie themes also right like I'm just extending this uh, it can have that origin in the past times of the Lord right we discussed this hero struggling first Lord Krishna Balaram getting impacted early in the past times uh, with the with uh, uh, Hiranyaksha Dvibida etc as well as villain taking revenge on the relative of the hero Remember, Salva suddenly uh, appeared to kill Vasudev with the sword. We covered this a couple of months ago. Anybody remembers that? Uh, yes, Prabhu. Yes, yeah. Prabhu. Okay. Is Divan Grace AC Bhaktivedanta Swami Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai? Prabhu. Yes. We're going to not go, we're not going to go away. We're going to go into the quiz quickly. Yeah. Oh, Please go ahead. Can I can I just say one little thing? I don't Please. know if it's quite important, but I just want it just came to my mind. Go ahead. Um, you know, I love the way how the two brothers have a complete understanding in whatever they are doing and they don't interfere with each other's affairs and they don't uh, mess up with each other's life. Like when Krishna was going to kill Kali, uh, Balram went away from that place. And you know, Krishna had uh, did his uh, job very well. And then when when uh, Krishna chose that Balram could kill uh, pra Pralambasura and uh, Drivida, he doesn't interfere. He doesn't come into the scene and, you know, mess up and say, okay, here you go, Balram. Here you, you, it's all, he's all yours. He doesn't mess up like that, you know? So I was just thinking that was like a total understanding between the siblings. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a very nice uh, point that you're bringing, right? So, and and, and also, you know, uh, during uh, during the creation of Dwaraka as well, right? It's perfect communication as well. In, in this case, I think uh, uh, there is, even without, uh, um, you know, obvious communication, it's, it's yeah. structured in such a way. But in many of the past times, beautiful communication is also there, right? Where, uh, uh, when uh, when Kalyavana is coming, Krishna says, no, 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 you know, he may come, um, um, uh, you know, uh, other demons may come and uh, impact uh, uh, Dwaraka. When I'm fighting with Kalyavana, uh, uh, Jarasandha will come. So you stay here. Uh, so, so there is beautiful past times. So they don't, it's not like both of them are in the one place and they're uh, uh, missing out on the other place where something is happening, right? Even mm -hmm. during Salva's uh, uh, pastime, right? Krishna was still in uh, Indraprastha, right? Because the Rajasurya, Rajasurya Agya was done. And then, uh, so Krishna was still there, but then, um, you know, Balaram, Pradyumna was there, right? If you remember, Pradyumna mm -hmm. was there and Balaram. Mm -hmm. So it's beautifully coordinated and orchestrated yeah. between them in many places, even without obvious communication and yep. in many places proper communication as well. That's how we all have to learn, Prabhu, with our siblings. Yeah, you know? like yeah, yeah. Give them each other the space and, you know, treat each other with respect and, you know. Yeah, and delegate if uh, it has to be delegated. Yeah. You know? yeah. Beautiful. So let's let's go quickly. It's very simple quiz. So only two, three minutes of your time, please. Uh, um, okay. Anybody can read it and also answer it, please. My throat is Try. Can somebody read and read the question and the choices and the answer, please? The past times, past times of Lord Balarama slaying Duvida is in Canto 10. Okay, answer is there. Beautiful. I always put this very obvious, but it's good for your reference. Okay, number two. Anyone else? The statement is true. Duvida was one of the advisors of King Ambarish, but second one is true, Prabhu. This B. Duvida was one of the advisors of King Subriva. Yes, very good. Okay. A friend, uh, Balasura, louder, Balasura. louder, louder, please. And Divida was a friend of Balaram, Lord Krishna, or Lord Brahma, Balaram. What's what's the answer, Prabhu? Let's 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 hear from uh, let's let's hear from uh, um, who was that? Uh, was that um, Govindadas Prabhu? 
I know it was going to us, Prabhu. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Being quiet, eh, Prabhu. Yeah, nice yeah, try. <laughs> so Dwibida was a friend of what? Bona Sura, Bona Sura, Bona Sura, Bona Sura. Bauma Sura or Naraka Sura. Very good. Bauma Sura. Bauma Sura or Naraka Sura. Naraka Sura. Okay, number four. Anyone else, Prabhus? Faster we read, faster we can do other things. Mind the, mind the, be mind the. No, no, full question and answers, please. Divida was the brother of C. Mind the. Uh, read the choices and give the answers if you don't mind. Divida was the. A. Bamasura, B. Sugriva, C. Mind the, D. Wali. And the answer is. C. Mind the. Good, very good. We covered this very early today. So Divida was the brother of yeah. Mind the. Very good, very good. Okay, so read the entire que- question, the choices, and then give the right answer, please. Okay, anyone else? Mata ji. Strength of. Strength of. Any Mata ji? Druda with the strength a. of. Blank churned the ocean and submerged the coastal regions, which is ten thousand elephants. D. Good. Good. So I just tried to confuse you by saying ten thousand gorilla because Dwibida was a gorilla, but actually Shrimad Bhagwatam says this Dwibida the gorilla had ten thousand. It was elephants. as strong elephants. as ten thousand elephants. Okay, good. Next one. Dwibida dashed the sacrificial fires of the exalted sages. A offered B into B respected C contaminated C contaminated is the yes. answer. Yes, Dwibida contaminated the sacrificial fires. He didn't offer ghee or anything like that. Okay, <laughs> number six. Anybody? Dwibida oh. has petrol. Keep going. Keep going. Mm-hmm. Please read. Dwibida has yes. Dwibida has atrocities included setting fires that burned cities, villages, mines, and cow herd dwellings. Uprooted the mountains and devastated the kingdom. Churned the ocean and submerged the coastal regions. Contaminated the sacrificial fires of the exalted sages. Imprisoned citizens within caves and shut the entrance with boulders. Made many indecent gestures to the women. Insulted Lord Balram by breaking his varuni pot, lunging at him and Sorry, by pulling laughing the women's at him. clothing. Sorry, so oh, laughing, at, laughing him. at him. Yeah. Laughing at him and by pulling the women's clothing. So the answer is all the above. Very good. So if you if you would like to take a picture of this, this will be good because this is all the offenses that uh, he had done. So the answer is all of the above. Okay. I think this is the last page that we have. Okay. Anyone else? Uh, Prabhu, uh, can you please go one slide before quickly, please? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Amal Prabhu. Yeah. Seeing the apes' impudence, Lord Borama's consorts cried, yelled, laughed, ran away. And laughed. Yeah. And said, so "See, laughed." Yeah. Laughed. Very good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anyone else? Mother. Lord. Any mother? Don't feel shy, please. Okay, Gansham Prabhu. Not stuck. Suchi Gopinath Prabhu. Uh, Can Sunanda, I? Sunanda Gabal. Uh, Sunanda. No, no, no. We need the whole question, the choices, and the answers. Sorry, sorry. The Lord struck Dvivida with his uh, uh, dash club. club. A. Kamodiki. B. Sunanda. C. Balchita. C. Panchajanya. Answer is B. Sunanda. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Okay, I think this is the last uh, question or penultimate one. Anyone else? Yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. Anyone? Trivida attacked. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Trivida attacked Lord Balram with several huge blank, then with massive blank, and finally with his blank. Uh, A is weapon. And trident and air, arrow, and then B is boulders, mountains, and head. C is tree, tree, stone, and fist. C. Very good. Trees, stone. So with several huge trees. Remember, he started off with trees, and the forest became treeless. Then he went to massive stones, and no more stones were there. Then he started using his own hands, and uh, still nothing happened. So 
Yes, Divan Gay says, "See, Bhakti Vedanta Swami, oh, the Prabhupada." Yeah. He found it yeah. useful, and there's quite a few takeaways. And then, please meditate on this, and please review, if possible, ten point sixty seven again, so that uh, it registers nicely. And uh, we will see you uh, next time. Until then, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Hare Hare. Tomorrow we class. Thank you. Yes, tomorrow we have a class. Hare Krishna, Shri Prabhupada. Thank you. Thank you.